afternoon. It is Monday, April 22nd. It is the Easter Monday uh, on the Leadership Blend, and I'm hosting. I'm Simone Cherie. Uh, normally, when I host, Ricardo is not here, but he is here today, so I'm going to let him and, and Jazz give themselves official introductions. It's just Jazz. And it's your boy, Ricardo <laughs> Rice, sitting on the other side. Oh, wow. uh, for those that did not tune in on Friday, we renamed Jazz, so she's now Just Jazz. Just Jazz. Just Jazz. Okay, okay, okay. Because she sounded real dry. She was like, Jazz. <laughs> So we came up with <laughs> so you just had to jazz. spice it up. Okay. Yeah. So that's 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 our new name. So just jazz and Ricardo D Rice. How was y'all's weekends? It was pretty good. No complaints. I took graduation pictures. Um, really? Yeah. On Saturday, cool. and it was cold. Like it was free. When they were outside? Mm-hmm. Like for, you know the ones for your um announcements and all that. Not like the ones like with my little hat on and then like the little thingy I can't think of a diploma but so like invitation type yeah like invitation type things just for me to have but it was cold and I don't think they're gonna turn out cute because I was cold I don't know lately you have not been smiling I've noticed that like you come in here like you ready to punch everybody in the face like I, have I to, think I'm I like put that my all gun the time. under the desk no, you have, you have a resting beef yeah I have a resting beef no face. people tell me that really, all the time so well maybe it was like when you when I hired you because you was trying to get the dough yeah, now, <laughs> maybe sudden, no, maybe now I'm getting but no real I get you. that all the time that I have the resting beef face it's just that's just how I look I'm not mad or anything. I'm just minding my business. Just thinking. oh, did you? See yeah. That you know what? That's another piece of the puzzle. You weren't here that time we talked about the relationship and she oh don't like the hug. And, uh, uh, that is a very interesting uh, she's not a viewpoint. Hugger. She's not a hugger. She's not super affectionate. Okay. She. This explains a lot. Like I'm, I'm, I'm starting to learn piece by piece. So now you guys make a uh, New Year's resolution like Simone did. I did catch a piece of that, and you said that you were going to teach her how to hug, or at least help her to work on that at some. Well, I think she's gonna give me one of those church hugs that she like hug yeah. you all the way back. <laughs> or either you, you hug her and she's looking at you like, "Is this over yet?" Or she's counting it. <laughs> yeah, she's like one of those workplace weirdos. I just I, workplace weirdos. Wait uh, a minute. Workplace weirdos that doesn't like hugs and, and stuff like that. Well, like, I want to hug you at work anyways. I come to get my job done. So. Oh my god. <laughs> See. Listen, that's, that's that's a good topic, and I feel like that's probably going to be a recurring thing because it, it keeps coming up with regard to what people's personal space levels are. <laughs> um, Wait, what? Because it came up in politics before. It came up with Biden. I'm sure it'll come oh, up Biden. again, especially now that we got another one. Hey, um, hey, apparently it rubbed off on you because you made your little resolution that you were going to try to yeah. you know, strengthen and create relationships that's very outside true. of work. That is very How true. How has that been going, actually? I think it's been going well. Um, because I've actually been kind of tired. Uh, I've been doing a lot of social things lately. I went out with the colleague for lunch. Oh my God. It was, which is a very big, now I happen oh. to get sick as well. Wait, so I, I'm oh. not going to talk about this restaurant, um, but it is a, it is a vegan restaurant. It's a Jamaican vegan mistake. restaurant um, in restaurant? the West End, but I'm not going to name it. But I did have a bad experience and I didn't write a review because sometimes those things happen and I don't want to, you know, I like small business, but I was sick as a dog from eating at this place. And I actually believe it was the cookie that made me sick, not the actual meal that I, I had. Sick I don't know. It was a vegan cookie. Everything's vegan. Um, but this particular cookie had, uh, yeah, it was bad. So, but the experience was good, and I felt like I bonded with her a little bit. Um, oh, yeah, she was going through a little something, and that was kind of like I remember I talked to you about this before. Like when people just throw things on you, like how do you kind of? Yeah, and I told you you don't have to do all that. That's that's not right. part of what we're trying to do. But you have to try to be supportive. I'm also working on being supportive. Yeah, but you have to be careful. That I told you if you become too supportive, then folks start leaning on you. They start coming. They start stuff. calling your phone two and three o'clock in the morning. Girl, I just can't make it. You almost start that, I'm telling you. <laughs> no, I really don't. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was good, so I'm working on it. It's April. I feel like I made great progress. Um, <laughs> we're going to talk a little bit about politics, obviously. So we're going to start out with some political news. We're going to move into entertainment because we had two weekends of Coachella, um, and a lot of news came out of that. Um, <clears throat> obviously, I mean, there's also a, an incident, a terrorist bombing <laughs> on Sunday, on Easter Sunday, on Jesus' Resurrection Day um, in Sri Lanka, in which hundreds of people, 290, I think, is the official death toll. Um, and some crazy new laws that states are trying to pass. In Texas, they are trying to, it is going to become a felony if you have an error on your voter registration card, whether it's a zip code issue, last name issue, any sort of an issue that that's, could become a felony. That already passed the House. Um, another bill passed the House in Alabama, um, in which kids have to say the pledge, and we'll see if that ends up in the Senate. And Trump is suing Rep. Elijah Cummings, who's African-American civil rights leader Elijah Cummings, uh, for trying to look at his finances. Lots of news. <laughs> Lots of news. That's what we call it, some of that. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so starting off, I guess just starting off at the top here, there's a really full Democratic ticket. That's an understatement. Yes. So 19, a 19th candidate has officially entered the race. He, he is Rep. Seth Moulton. He's the latest Democrat turn of the field. He's a Marine veteran. Um, 
he's trying to stand out by focusing on national security um, and gun control and climate change. He's 40, which makes him one of the younger ones, uh, oddly enough, um, in this field. He went to Harvard as an MBA. Um, I mean, this, listen, I, have one of those I would like person. to go to Harvard. <laughs> I have one of those. <laughs> and he has an MBA. So. That's not impressive. Um, so he's, his advisors are saying that even though they know that the field is crowded, they think he's younger and he's fresher and that may you know help him to that kind of stand out. That works for senators and stuff. That doesn't work for the president. I feel like people just doing stuff. You know how people do things just to put on their resume and just to fill it up? I feel like this is what these people are doing now. Just well, to say, I, I ran for president. It does something for you to run for office, even if it's just mayor. I mean, I, I've seen people take that into books, take it into other offices, take it into board um, advisory roles just because they've run for something. I well, mean, we're it, still it, waiting for Biden. He's supposed to say something this week. So we're waiting on Biden True. Um, to say something. And I'm just looking at this here, and it's crazy. So like I said last week, you have Booker. I don't know how you pronounce this guy's name. The gay one from- Buttigieg? Yeah, that's like Buttigieg. Buttigieg. Yeah. Oh, okay, Booker, Buttigieg, week. Castro, mm-hmm. Delaney, Gabbard, Gillibrand, Harris, Hickenlooper, Inslee, Hickenlooper. Uh, Klobuchar, Massam, which is a guy I didn't know he was running, uh, Mouton, O'Rourke, Ryan, Salt, Warren, Williamson, and Yang. Yep. I can't. I believe it. It's a lot of, it's a lot of people. Um, Andrew Yang has oh, made some headlines oh. recently. Um, and he's starting to get some press, and his name is starting to get out there. But we still have the top two front runners. Um, excuse me, they're still number one and number two that are very clear. So Biden still has high twenties, low thirties, depending on who you ask. Which percent is interesting. He hadn't even announced yet. He still got it. Bernie has twenty something percent, depending on who you ask. Um, as low as twenty, as high as twenty eight percent of the vote. Um, Kamala Harris is now, I think, a firm third place, but she's uh, much further behind with about nine percent. Um, so those three have still been constant, and they've sat there, which I think is why um, Senator Elizabeth Warren just announced the the big old idea that she just announced with canceling out all the college debt. But Booker hasn't made any ground or gained any headway. Neither did Howard Schultz, even though I thought he was awesome. Um, That's because Booker does not know how to utilize when the wave comes his way. You, you think he sat on the wave? wave you think he missed the wave? <laughs> Once again, Cory Booker has missed a wave. You had a nice wave. Everybody was all interested in your little girlfriend. That was a nice little wave for you to come out swinging. He didn't. He sat there and let the wave come on. The tidal wave came right on past him. So mm-hmm. we back to square one with Cory Booker. At this point, I'm done with him. He might as well go. I don't even think he's going to be, nobody would consider him as a VP. So at this point, he might so. just find something else to do. Yeah, nobody's going to consider him as a VP. You don't know how to ride the wave. This is all about <laughs> riding waves. He doesn't know how to ride a wave. So at this yeah. point, he might as well go take a knitting class. And just knit some booties yeah. for um <laughs> for Rosario and just call it a day. Like well, I mean, look, there's gonna be the the sad thing about that is that 37 percent of the voters of 2020 will be Gen Z or millennials, and I feel like Cory Booker probably has the most appeal among that group, uh, at least at least partly, and that's just a big wasted opportunity. Like well, we're gonna be that's a majority technically of all the generations, and it says a ma- most younger Americans, according this is according to NBC, believe the baby boomers do not care about people like them, do not understand the issues that young people are facing, which would mean you would think that Bernie wouldn't be so popular. Well, or that still, Biden wouldn't be so popular. I'm still kind of into this, uh, I keep butchering his name. Buttigieg, Buttigieg yeah, Pete. I'm yeah. still into him because he's a mayor. He so is. I'm like, out of all of them, he has real operating experience running a city. Which, yeah, you know, mayors and governors, I think, have very similar roles yeah, they, to the president. Yeah, that can translate yeah. to him being a, a pretty decent president. I mean, you understand how to be over people in the government capacity. Like, everybody else is senators and congressmen and all that stuff, but you actually have run a city. So I'm, I'm you know, I'm kind of... <laughs> now, if he can stop going back and forth with um, Pence, he might have a shot. I mean, right. But I don't know, because now they're having this whole gay debacle... Um, and they're coming after him for being gay and, and all that kind of stuff, which could actually work in his favor because if the LGBT say, yeah. runs in to Favorite. to cover him, then he he good. So this might actually work in his favor. This is that old adage of uh, any publicity is not always bad publicity. So, That's hey, true. That's if true. If this works, he actually, you know what? Keep fighting with Pence because eventually the LGBT police will come in or LGBTQ police will come in, cover you, and put some money behind you, and you actually might shoot to the top. So it might be a good strategy. See that, Booker? Yeah. See how fast we did that? See? <laughs> and LGBTQ issues are still really on the table because um, there are going to be three cases that will reach the Supreme Court this year about whether or not those rights can be enforced under the Civil Rights Act. Like there was, um, in particular, there was a trans uh, woman who lost her job. And basically, we all have a right to employment, no, no matter our sex, no matter our gender. Yeah, so that's going to hit the Supreme Court as to whether or not... Uh, 
transitioning people or someone who is transgender is also protected under that whole umbrella. So now there's going to be um, back-to-back town halls tonight. CNN has been promoting this con- like <clears throat> all day long, really all weekend long. Wait, town um, halls. Yeah, and they're kind of promoting it like it's going to be a wrestling match. So it's going to be Warren, uh, Sanders, and CNN often has town halls. It used to be always Fox News, but they're going to have a Democratic presidential town hall, and it's going to be back-to-back tonight. So I think starting 8 o'clock. Um, it should be good. I think it should be really good. This was one of the big, I think, first cable news network events that you want to see who's going to be on that table because if everybody's not on it, I think it's a really easy way to fall behind. Like, Klobuchar's going to be on there. Um, Pete Buttigieg will be on there. But all the other people I've not heard about. So I've not heard about Schultz getting getting it. Andrew Yang I don't think is going to be there. And this is, I think, when you start seeing the debates in the town halls and people can't make it to the table, that's when I think they start to fall behind. So the fact that Booker's not on this ticket is kind of like... I done told you. Like, how did you not get on this ticket? Kamala Harris is on it. And get, well, Kamala's not playing. She's been out in these streets. She has. She has. uh, Making some noise. So, they're doing five hours of back to back town halls. So, Cooper's going to moderate it. Lemon's going to nominate it. Excuse me, moderate it. It should be good. Well, it still takes us back to. So, we know that all 20 some of these idiots cannot be president. (laughs) They can't be the nominee. I'm expecting two more. I just prophesied two more going to show up (laughs) before we get to what? Before we get to June, two more going to pop up. So the question is starting is going to start becoming who's looking good for VP. Right. That's kind of where we at at this point cuz is anybody even running for that like anybody still People very that? rarely announce yeah, for VP. For they VP. announce for president and then they end up on somebody's ticket. Yeah. Yeah. Cuz wow. especially in this case like all night all I'm sticking to my number. All 22 of these idiots. I said be yeah. 25. Can no, cuz that be like auditioning to be an understudy. Pretty much, <laughs> which is like nobody does. You just end you, up an understudy. Somebody, which some of these pinheads knew good and well they're not gonna win, <laughs> but you know you gotta throw your hat in there. So at least if you well, put look, up that's a not decent, stupid. I mean, I guess, and it, I'd rather be vice president if I had to be one of the two. I don't do two. That's not stupid. I don't do two. I don't well, do one. Two, two is a safer spot, I think. I, I don't do two. I do one. <laughs> so I'm just saying. But at this point, I guess the objective would be to put up a good fight. So at least whoever wins the nomination will say. Oh, you know what? Kamala put up a pretty good fight. I could use her on my VP ticket. So I guess that right. becomes the goal for the people who are less vocal and less stand outish yeah. at this point. It is to put up yeah. such a good fight that somebody considers you for um thing. Although I still stand by Stacey Abrams because she has not said what she's gonna do yet. I thought she was gonna be our graduation speaker, but she's not. She don't like to do that kind of stuff. So it would have been nice. Okay, we well, have... it would be nice for me to win a million dollars. What you saying? Oh, what I'm saying is it would have been nice. We have um the Obama's former U.S. attorney or something like that. I can't think of her name. Sounds boring. Oh, yeah, she's still doing it. She got a, with her new book and her new fame and all the rumors about a presidential ticket. So she's still out there. And, she, you know, but what they really want to do, whoever's running, they want to find out who who can they probably not get to vote for them and who's going to convince them to vote for me. So in oh, my yeah. mind, I would assume that whoever, you know, especially if it was Biden or Sanders, I would think they would want someone diverse as well, a VP. You would, you would think... Actually, that changes the table because then you have to look at all the people that they're probably not going to get, especially if Bernie or um, what's the man name? What is that one? Biden. <laughs> yeah, Biden. Yeah. It's Monday. I know how I get on Mondays. Uh, when you look at it, it, you're left with LGBT candidates because those are the ones you really have to try to get. Uh, minority candidates, which will put Abrams, Peter and A- Peter and Abrams in the front because. He's LGBTQ. She's African American. Or Kamala. Or I don't. The problem with Kamala is she has that independent black woman thing. That I don't know if they're gonna really. She's not a she, second person. She's Stacy can take down and be you know on the side doing her thing and still be that chick. You see that over? You see her as a a more. I don't even want to say docile. I was gonna say submissive, but I didn't want to say that either. You think but. that? But I I see between the two of them. I think Kamala would be more so. What? Stacey has come out guns blazing, and I've seen her check people on yeah, live TV. I've, yeah, I've never seen I've Kamala seen come out of herself or even Kamala was a prosecutor. Trust me, that, that sure, bulldog sure. is in her, and sure. she will le- unleash them dogs. But I also could see her sitting in a corner quiet with her legs crossed. Really? Yeah, I could. Really? I, could, I have. I've, I can also see her just playing the sidelines. I really uh, could. Yeah, I can see her doing it, but I can see her not being happy doing it. Abrams would do it, and she would do it gracefully. She would do it, you, whatever's you, asked of wow. her. She'll sit there. She's doing it now. She could she could have stayed on the battlefield and still had them guns a blazing and really gone down. But she was like, you know what? I'm good. I'm gonna take back. I'm not gonna concede, but I'm gonna take back and I'm gonna work from the sidelines. 
I've seen her do it. Kamala is not going to be no side chick. She's just not a side piece. Hmm. She's not going to do it. Well, I can't wait to see her on this town hall. Yeah, because I, that, I think that's going to make it. I think that's going to make a big difference to me. Because I'm not saying she can't speak for herself, but I'm just saying I don't see Abrams between the two of them. I like Abrams is hitting the talk show circuit. That's what she decided to do. So yeah, she's she on everybody so, else's morning morning she show. Does it so uh, quiet and elegant, <laughs> so gracefully. Kamala be coming out like a pit bull in a skirt, like um, Eve used to say. I mean, she's aggr- okay. Well, she's, look, I want to look. I'm, I hope uh, so. Beautifully aggressive. I hope oh, so. I like that. She's beautifully aggressive. That's I don't a good see her way to put it. VP. That's a nice way to put yeah, it. Yeah, she's beautifully aggressive. I don't see her being anybody's VP though. I think what they should really be focused on is who's going to get that millennial and Gen Z vote. That's what, if I was the Democratic Party, if I was in the Democratic National Committee, I would be looking at who's going to get that vote because it's very clear where the money is going. But the problem that I think Democrats ran into in 2016 was that they went with the money person, the money player, who was Clinton, and I think it cost them because I think the Bernie voters never got over it. I think they were very, very pissed off. He had like a 79% approval rate among millennials and young people, and I think they just did not get over the fact that their guy didn't get it. And they didn't go out and vote. I mean, one does have to worry. Stan is like 206 years old. I mean, <laughs> one does. I mean, I'm, I'm Bernster all day, every day. One does. Have but to one it. does have to worry. Like, that means they ask this big. question how old do you think a president should be? Like, that's a valid question. That's been coming up more and more. I mean, he had he, any health scares or anything? That don't mean anything these days. I'm just asking. Well, actually. Because isn't Trump old too? He's well, yeah. Old Bernie. yeah. People people thought he was too yeah, old. Like my, also, people like Trump old too. They don't understand how that happened. No, Bernie is seventy seven. So if we can get four good years out of him, no, seventy. He's seventy. Who? Oh, no. At least he was when he took office. No. But people were worried about that, and they wanted him to get a. Um, remember, you he have to go. 72. Trump is seventy two. Yeah, he's old. You have to undergo a medical evaluation, and remember, Trump's was like written from his like family doctor, and people were like, "You tripping?" Yeah, because the the doctor's <laughs> notes basically said, "Oh, he's in amazing health." He's in picture perfect health. And they said, whose doctor talks like this? <laughs> Nobody's doctor would say you were in amazing health. They would find something wrong with you and write Actually, it down. How old is oh, Abrams is only 45. Yeah, she's young. She's young. Uh, Beto, Beto O'Rourke is young. Kamala Harris, Booker is young. So there's lots of young people, lots of people of color, lots of women. Actually, now that we're talking about it, what? Biden and Sanders are one year apart. Biden yeah, they're both old. Great, Biden's they're bo- 76. He does look great. He looks great. That's what it is. Because I'll get ready to say, well, to say that Stacey's only forty-five. I thought she was older than that. I'm just saying. Really? Yeah. No. You know, let me go look. That is rude. That I'm is very saying, rude. I thought Stacey. she was older than that. Okay. Love her, um, but I, th- I thought she was older than that. So we talked about this really quick. So we talked about this a little bit. We might as well go into it since we're talking about young people because not just Jazz, who has no student loan debt. I didn't say that now. But you, I think, <laughs> Ricardo, you very much sympathize with student loan debt. We do uh, have yeah. a student debt crisis that is indisputable. It's one of very few indisputable things in this country. Mm. It's about um, $40,000 per American if we all divided it evenly. Everyone would have forty k in debt because of student loan debt. And Senator Elizabeth Warren has proposed to cancel that debt. It's called her wealth tax. Um, she says if she's um, president, this is a $62 billion, excuse me, $620 billion proposal. That will tax people who make over five hundred thousand a year and up to fifty million in assets, and she wants to cancel student loan debt. Um, so, if you went to a public school, this would apply to you. So, if you went to private, it doesn't apply to you. I don't believe so. Oh well, I don't I believe so. Conversation. <laughs> well, look, <laughs> Wait, look. Most people Tuskegee is private. Well, that premise is going to alleviate most of the HBCUs because most of them are all private. Yeah, most are. So they're all going to be most are. Uh, it but that's a small, work. yeah, and that's a small minority. Here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth, stop lying. <laughs> You're not going to be able to do that, and you need to stop. At this point, Elizabeth Warren is stre- she's, she's stretching. You're not going to be, where you going, who's going to agree to that? She's trying to get the younger voters. She's trying so to get by people who are millennials. Not by, listen. <laughs> I mean, it's but I lied to him. You sound like is that what we doing? You are we sound lying like, to people? You sound like the Republicans. <laughs> it, it's the, come on now. Fifty one percent of HBCUs, by the way, are public. Yeah. What? Fifty one percent. There's one hundred two. Fifty one percent are public. I don't know. Not all of them are. Fifty one percent. Albany, ASU. So you think just because you name five of them that that's the majority? Because you can name five. I think five it says fifty one. What's another one? What's the one that they told me? Anyway, the point <laughs> is, <laughs> I need Elizabeth to stop lying to people. You're not gonna be able to do that. And until you can give me a fees, actually, no, 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 I'll give you, I'll, I'll give you space. Okay. I want to hear this plan. How you expect to do this? And don't give me no um, Peter Pan. I meant not Peter Pan. Don't give me no Robin Hood crap. 
Oh, we're going to put it all on the rich folks. That's what she's saying. We're just gonna, we just going to um, move it from you from the middle man to the rich man. Save that garbage. Until you can give me a feasible plan how you can pull this off, stop lying to these kids. You're not going to be able to pull it off. You just want to get in the office and make a mess. No, I'm not buying that crap. And I'll be the first one to tap dance for some somebody to wipe away my debt. But you're not going to lie to me. That's, that's you me would not tap dance? Do. You would tap dance? I would tap dance. I would happily tap dance if I could get my, I my income tax. I mean, my um my student loans wiped away. But what you're not going to do to me is lie to me. That's what you're not going to do. And Elizabeth Warren is, is coming over. She's fabricating people. I don't want anybody to fall for that crap. She's fabricating. Now what if it all you know, happens? You I think it sounds it. a lot more grandiose and a lot more sexy than the more practical plans like the one Kamala Harris put forth where she's just talking about helping to decrease people's rent or to control their mortgage increases and you know she's got little ways of trying to even the the wealth gap but it's it's harder to package up it's not, it doesn't sound as nice as I'm canceling your debt. I'm canceling your student loan debt. I know see every time you say you know cancel I mean? my spirit jump. That's, that's, <laughs> that's the foolishness. I mean look here's the reality people at this point, we're going to have to narrow all these pinheads down to one person. So now is the time to start really listening to what people are saying and not just listen to what sounds nice and tickles our ears. Right. And when somebody says they can cancel, ooh, I felt real good when I said that. <laughs> when somebody said they can cancel your student loan debt, that's straight out garbage. You cannot cancel out the student loan debt. Unfortunately, the student loan debt is a very high Astronaut. number. And if we can get a fraction of that from people... Fine. What you should say is we'll find better ways and better avenues by which to place you in arenas that you can actually make that money back faster. Now, that's something that would not only tickle my ears but make me feel good and warm and tingly on the inside. If you want to make me feel good, do that. Find better avenues by which to uh, place these individuals once they graduate with these some of these degrees. Job are creation at this point. is what you're saying. Well, no, because job creation... It's just that what, when you say that, then they'll have the franchisees go open more McDonald's and Little Caesars and place them there to say, hey, we got them back. We got them to work. No, I'm talking about some creation, avenue creation. That's what we can call it, avenue creation, saying that if I get a degree in marketing, you know, we will find some creative outlets by which to place me in a marketing firm and make sure that I'm making the money that's equivalent to what my student loans are going to be. Now, if we can talk about something like that then I'm all for that. But you getting up on a stage and lying to me and telling me you can cancel my debt just because it makes my heart jump, I'm not about that part. I'm not about that life. I love how conservative I feel like Ricardo has become over the last nine months. Like, I feel like you would have never made these sorts of statements some time ago. I really don't. And I, I haven't like been here. How long have I been here? Nine, yeah, about nine months. Oh, so it all comes back and you to just you. gave a speech that sounded like it came straight from the mouth of Mitt Romney. Like, <laughs> we need job creation. Not just job creation, but if we need a highly skilled put my name workforce. In the same sense That's what you just gave Mitt me. Romney. And I agreed with every word because it was right. It was accurate information. No, so. I'm just getting older and I realize what <laughs> things really are. And like I say, when people say this kind of crap, and plus, you know, I, and you're worried about the fact that your income is supposed to be going up very quickly, and you know that that wealth tax is going to apply to you. I feel like you just put me on front street, but okay. So and look, it's no secret. Everybody knows I plan on being wealthy before this year is out. That's fine. But um, okay, a little bit of that is in keeping that in mind too. But <laughs> the reality is, all of us know somebody who has graduated from college and has some level of student loan debt. We're all in this boat together, and I'm not going to let some presidential candidate come here and lie to me and tell me she could wipe away my debt. It's just not possible. Because yeah. you, you, even though you're president, you'll be president of the free world, you still are not the only person that has final say in a lot of these things. These not Stuff like this goes across the board. So you got to fight with DeVos if she's still there, and she's and drag the her Senate, feet on everything. And the Senate, yeah, which the is Senate still Republican right now. You cannot, yeah. Come on, people. If you don't know any better, I'm telling you better. She can't do that. There's no way on God's green unless she has a magic wand and she can do the Audrey Magini thing, which if she can, she'll become my best friend. But unless she can do an Audrey Magini and just, you know, do the arm thing and shake her head and the, and the debt goes away, she can't do it. So next, save them lies. For somebody who's going to believe it. Right. Now, Bernie, um, in his defense, who I, I usually refer to as millionaire Bernie Sanders. You're not going to do that. On he this went show, to, we, we just, refer just, to him just, as the Bernster. Just, okay. Millionaire. The millionaire. <laughs> Bernie Sanders, also known as the Bernster, went on Fox News to defend his wealth tax, despite his own wealth. He released 10 years of tax returns, uh, which not all 19 of the Democratic candidates have done, which is very important, I think, because Democrats, remember, are trying to force Trump to release his tax returns. And as of this morning, Trump is now suing the House Democrats. Um, caucus, including Rep. Elijah Cummings, for trying to basically pry into his financial records. So as a personal person, not as the president, but as a personal citizen, Donald Trump, um, in his business, he is suing uh, the House Democratic Caucus. I don't know how that's going to work out.
out. As that unfolds, we can talk more about it. Um, president sue? He's suing as his person. He's not suing in his official presidential capacity. See, this it's is funny though. Well, it's, he says that this is her, this, he said this is akin to harassment, essentially, that they've tried to subpoena his financial records. The problem with this, and this is why they should have made Trump follow all the rules. Because the ideology behind you being the, the president of the free world is that it's no longer really just you. So when Obama was in office, he was always President Obama. It was very rare that he was Obama doing these kinds of things. But we've let Trump get away with all kind of crap. So now he's doing all this unconventional stuff. The real question that's on the table is, are we, Nancy, I'm talking to you now, Nancy. Are we going to pursue impeachment? Because now the, right. the House is becoming all fragmented because nobody can decide what they want to do. And right. we've been over this and we went over this when y'all won the House. You don't have time for these frivolous <laughs> agendas. It's already April. It's almost, it's darn near May. Yep. So at this point, we got to pass legislation that's going to do something to help the people. Outside of all these witch hunts we own, trying to get income tax and tax mm-hmm. returns, and, and we got we don't have yeah. time for this. And Congressman Cummings spoke to that when he was on, um, he, I think he was on CNN over the weekend, and they said, why are you, why is this something you really believe you should pursue? Like, why are you after it? He said he believes history will smile on their conviction. Not that he thinks it's going to work or be successful, but it's about being on the right side of history, I guess, at this point. I still firmly believe, not just about the time that we're wasting, but that you don't have an impeachable offense. It, like, even if you did, the Senate would have to agree to it. So it's still, to me, it's, it's, it's just a big waste of Which time, Which, I remind everybody, the Senate is full of his homeboys. So they're not going to yes, shoot him. Republicans. They're full of his homeboys. <laughs> I don't know if they're his homeboys or if they're in, living in fear. I think I think most Republicans are living look, in fear. Sometimes when, when you're in a gang, a fear look, will keep yeah. you loyal. So look, that's true. All his that's homeboys entirely true. are in the, the Senate. So I don't know why we're wasting time on this. Y'all can't even get the Senate to agree to half the stuff y'all been trying to get passed in the last couple of months. How do you think you're going to get him to, to shoot his homeboy in the foot? Now, yeah. unless y'all tell me y'all got some side deals, y'all done slid some people some cash, and they done signed some, some papers saying they'll right. do this, this is stupid. Stop wasting time. Get something done. Agreed. Jesus. Agreed. Good point to end on. We're going to take our first break, and then we'll be right back on the Leadership Blend with Simone Sheree on IBNX. Hey, you better keep up with me. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. This is the Leadership Blend with Simone Cherie, and I'm joined by Jess Jazz. And God, what is my stage name when I'm sitting on this <laughs> oh side? Oh my God, um, it's just be the same. No, it's, that's not. And um, uh, oh wow, 
I don't know. Okay. Can you well, say the artist formerly known as Ricardo D. Wright? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Until further notice. This and this is uh, RDW. Well, listen, RDW. That's my initial. I want to come up with something new now. What? Well, by the time we come back from this, nice. I have a name. That's nice. You sound like a deceased president. RDW. <laughs> Doesn't that is, that's, like that's, remember that's, we were living under RDW? That's not what I was going for, and that's not really <laughs> like okay. those are some dark years of RDW. That, 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 that's not um, what I was going for. No, we'll be saying that about right now. Oh my God. So, <laughs> speaking of speaking of the times, we just just Jazz is going to pull up an article for us. Um, so tell us what you found out about Ancestry.com. <laughs> so over the weekend, Ancestry.com received a lot of backlash on Twitter for romanticizing slavery. Um, basically, the ad was, depicts a white man in clothing from the 1800s holding out a ring to a black woman and beckoning her to run away with him. Abigail, we can escape to the north, he says. There is a place we can be together across the border. Will you leave with me? And then the screen fades to black, and then it, on the screen it says, uncover the lost chapters of your family history with ancestry. And I don't know if Joseph wanted to play it. I was going to say, yeah, I think we have a clip. If you haven't seen this ad, that we should probably, probably run. Abigail, we can escape to the north. I don't There's a place we can be together across the border. Will you leave with me? Uncover the lost chapters of your family history with Ancestry. Get started for free at Ancestry.ca. Did he say the border? I think he did. So we're talking about Canada. Yes. Yeah, so he threw me somebody, with that. Somebody <laughs> or in Mexico. A spokesperson said that the ad was intended for those people from Canada because a lot of the slaves would um, go across the border up north or go all the way to Canada. So they said that that was what it was meant for. I don't understand that part. But also, this ad aired way back at the beginning of April, but we're now just hearing about it. So that was pretty interesting with that whole aspect. But my whole question is, I'm kind of like people on Twitter who came up with this, like, could there right. have not been another story to tell? Is this a real story? Is this what you always think about when it comes to black people? It was just, it was just poorly well, I think written. They, the acting was kind of awful to me, the writing. Sure. It was just, Abigail. Can, is it for shock value <laughs> or were you guys really that ignorant? I actually got um, to think about it, though. If you devy that up and we look at playing devil's advocate, the history of Caucasians and African Americans, you, when people, especially African Americans, start looking back, really, really looking back, you are going to run to slavery. Yeah. Now, I guess the way they portrayed it was stupid. <laughs> um, I mean, even if we're going back into our history, our history is not going to say that Abigail had an affair with, uh, I'm about to say Lucius, but Lucius is not a uh, Caucasian name. name. Abigail, that Abigail had an affair with, no, I ain't, that ain't good enough. John. That ain't good enough either. Uh, Bill. Bill. She, Bill. Then Abigail had an affair with Bill. You're not going to see that in your ancestry unless they got married. So the, the concept was stupid. The ideology isn't far-fetched. If most African Americans go back, you are going to run to slavery. So I get it. I just think it that just once again... It was poorly written. I guess that was the part they kind of messed yeah. up on. It, it was ain't little... nothing but somebody was watching the stories and <laughs> they were, while they were watching the stories, they was having these uh, romanticized notions and of interracial dating, and this is where they landed. I, yeah. well, I understand that because Green Book, if you guys remember Green Book from 2018, it was a film um, about Jim Crow era segregation, and it was very, it was heavily criticized for basically sh muting how ugly um, slavery and segregation laws were by basically making it look like this personal friendship between whites and blacks was somehow transcendent from the fact that, you know, at the time we were essentially... Uh, Subhuman. There were other issues to that too, though, with that yeah. movie, because they were saying, I guess that uh, <clears throat> Mahershala Ali's character was supposed to be the main character, but somehow it shifted to the white guy. Yeah, who was it became a, to be a story sidekick. of like a wise, brave white friend helping this. This. So I get that, a hundred percent. I do think, uh, like you said, I just feel like it was poorly written, poorly acted, and I feel like if they're gonna do these sorts of ads for Ancestry.com, which I'm not sure they should be doing ads. Yeah, I, I'm not sure they should. That's just as a service, when that's what you provide, I'm not sure you should be doing these type of ads. If you do, our stories are probably going to be pretty bleak. And I don't think you should probably <laughs> include our know, stories right? in these you, advertisements. You don't want maybe to with, maybe with just show African Irish people, you know, or show show pilgrims coming over. And, or just and, keep it cute the way you've been doing it. Show the little <laughs> the the tree, the yeah, tree. Yeah, the tree. Like, I find keep out. It cute. 
Why are we trying to get creative? There is a it's woman. Ancestry.com. Remember Sally? So there's a commercial with Sally at Ancestry.com who's so excited to be related to George Washington and she's showing her pieces of paper and she's all happy. That's probably where they should stay. They or should probably stick with that. Look, Ancestry, pay me. Here's an idea. <laughs> Why don't you, in that same regard, why don't you yeah. tell a young black girl who finds out she's related to Harry Tubman? If you're going to do something like that, get creative and get cute. That would be cute. A young girl's in I class and talking about Harry Tubman. For real, why you playing? Oh, actually, I got oh, it. My That's God. my last name. You know, Harriet Tubman's last name is really Ross, and I'm a Ross, so he's some key problem. Just want to throw that out there. I don't or think you just got anybody through anybody's underground railroad, so I'm not. Oh, I'm saying so, you were just talking about you being related to somebody in another story, so now that, I can't have that same. He was in jail. Okay, but still, I could be related to him. He was not a monument of figure in the African American so community. So you're saying that I can't be influenced? If she had, if she had children, if she had children, I'm saying that you should utilize you, Ancestry.com. <laughs> what were you gonna say? Did you have another another idea? Oh yeah, I was about to say. Another marketing. I mean, look, exactly. So Ancestry.com, pay me. So here's an idea. Why don't y'all have a young black girl sitting in class with an African American teacher and they're talking about Harry Tubman? She goes home and says, Well, mama, you know, we found out that Harry Tubman has the same person. last and I have. And then they go on Ancestry.com and discover that she actually is related to Harry Tubman. Now, that'd be cute. African American people would feel honored. Why well, y'all can't think of stuff like that? Why well, are we always got to come with this crap? For that. It'd also be really difficult. You ain't even, bro- you ain't even dark skin. What? What did that do with anything? We talk uh, about Harry Tubman. So, there's been years dark of skin. colonization since. That's quite. The, in reality, the average slave was bought or traded an average of three to five times before they died. That's according to a slave expert. So I, I do think that it's probably very hard, a, to figure out who's related to Harriet Tubman, and then b, uh, to figure that we would look anything like those people. My anyway. parents are dark skin. It's not. It's so it's a lottery. Both your parents are not dark. They are dark skin. Both your mom and dad. Yes. It, it's a lottery. Like That's why there's somebody light in my family. You know how our genes work and all that. Nobody's gonna be the same color. It's a lottery. But anyway, I don't care. You said it. <laughs> anyway, um, and that's why I think I have not used Ancestry.com now that I think about it. Like, it was cool to see genetic makeup, like just the science, but you're not going to trace my lineage. Like, you're not going to be able to. Find, I have really, really big doubts that you can go back very far with me. That's why I've like, I don't need to know my ancestry. I, I still want to know mine. I guess. I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm not disliking it. It's just very, I'm skeptical. I'm very skeptical. Why? That they would get it right, that they would actually have any proof of what they're talking about. Like, well, I mean, don't they give you a layout so you'd be able to actually go talk to people and actually do the re? I think I feel like Ancestry.com will kind of give you a roadmap to kind of start you with names and addresses, but it still will fall on you to actually go show up. Well, they up search and- birth certificates, they search marriage records, they search death records, um, and I do have a friend who that her family ended up buying the land that she was slaves that her family were slaves on, um, and they have some money. She had a pretty good result. I think when you have records like that, then you're probably okay. But I know my parents, my father at least, was not born in a hospital. So I have no, I just don't believe there's records like that for yeah, not for not my mind. I don't, I don't think we had birth records because I, I just don't believe we were born in hospitals. And I, I know we did not have marriage records. Um, so I just feel like it's probably not likely they're going to be able to find much. But I guess this is still new to me, though, because... Pepsi. African Americans typically tend to pass down their lineage by word of mouth. So I always tell about my family, mm-hmm. the Buckners, it's about 300 of us, and we actually know each other. So when we have the banquet, we That's actually awesome. talk about that. I think uh, my cousin David is a historian of the family. So when he, when everybody's together, he shares the stuff that we didn't know. And every year he learns something new. That's so he beautiful. tells I'm about everybody. To cry. Oh, I'm sorry, my I can't is do that. I don't, know any, I don't know any other Rosses besides me, my dad, my Same grandma, here. and before my aunties were married. Same here. I don't know Same. any Same of here. them. No, my, you, and then people think I'm joking. Like, my frame is very structured. We have uh, eight different states with uh, eight different chapters in each state. So there's chapters. a South Carolina chapter. Okay. This year, we just added a new chapter of Virginia Beach. What are we talking about? School? No, we talking about. Like, <laughs> Why are you saying a chapter? No, we're just, it's a chapter. Like, no, when I say it's a chapter, meaning there's, okay, so case in point. The Atlanta chapter was the last baby chapter. I mean, we were the last new chapter. When you become a chapter, they give you seed money. You go find a hotel that can house all the Buckners, which is usually a hotel that can hold about 300. You find a place to hold a picnic, which happens on Friday. And then you find a place to have the church services. So we have a format for the entire weekend. So when you are a chapter, you make sure that everything is facilitated for those three days. And like I said, the last day we do the, well, the last day we do church service on Sunday. Saturday night, we do the banquet where we pass the broom to the next chapter. It's, it's a whole, like, well, it's, it's pretty amazing. Well, let me take that back. I don't know the Rosses. But Are there like, video? Is there video? Married, I know those <laughs> Is there video of this spectacle <laughs> at, any, at any level? Uh, it was insane. Yes. I think, yes. And, um... I mean, we we've been doing it. Reunion? This sounds nice. Seriously, Actually, can I just join up? Because <laughs> I, mean, I don't I'm have that. Not and off. I would like that. 
The Buckners is like a big surname, so it has so many other last names in it. Because I'm an actual Rice, but my grandma was a Buckner, See? so it has so many other surnames in it. It's like 15 other surnames in it. So it's like this big old, the Buckner's the umbrella. So you have to see, I mean, like literally when we had it in Atlanta last year, we counted, it was 305 people at the reunion. And these are people we know each other. So like the reunion this year is in, I think the end of July. So you gonna see everybody, like if you follow my page, you gonna see us all start talking. Like, okay, what time you getting there? What time you getting there? Where you staying at? What room you in? Like, so when we yes. get there, we're all, we see, look forward to this every year. When but, I was younger, so hurt, the, you know. um, what? the family reunions used to be a little more serious, but they were, it wasn't even the Ross family reunion. It was Hill. I don't know who the Hill people are, but like that's the main. It's probably the umbrella name, and everybody uh, goes under. I don't know. Like, I don't know anything about those people. I just know it's on the shirt, and that's about as far as I can go. So I guess that's why Ancestry.com is kind of weird to me, because I'm like, I'm so used to David standing up. And even in his stead, yeah, so he would never pay two hundred dollars for something like that. God no, I just go well, grandma dead now, but I would just go to some of my, the other matriarchs that are still here and be like, okay, so who is such and such and such? But like I said, they'll show up at the frame union anyway. So at the um, the banquet, we find the oldest person, we give them an award for being the oldest, and then that's who we turn to. So grandma oh, died, and I think so grandma nice. Gladys is next, and so they share, you know, their aspect of it. it's a whole. A lot of people don't know nothing. You know, it's just cute. So Ancestry committed to serving a it says that they are committed to serving a diverse range of customers and the company uh, released a statement which they also included a list of activities and a film that they have funded related to black life. So Ancestry is basically apologizing and saying, but look at these good black things we do. Um, and I, 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 I don't know how much damage was done by this because as you said, it's months old. Mm. So I have a feeling it wasn't too, too painful for anybody. I think it just reads social media and then people, you know. Right. I think Pepsi is probably still the king of mistakes with regard to uh, black people and justice and the state of black America with their advertising with the Pepsi commercial. Even I still feel like to me that was a little bit more egregious and ridiculous. Wait, which one? The one Kendall, Kendall Jenner solving uh, police brutality with her can of Pepsi. When, when she approached like the officers. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That to me was still, I think, a little bit worse. So... I forgive Ancestry, I suppose. I do think it's worth it probably for you if you are curious just to see what they have. I definitely, I've done some digging around, free digging around. Um, I mean, if you find something that's probably well worth your time, but I just, I, I think in general it should be a safe rule that if you're going to touch on slavery, that you don't make it rosy and, <laughs> and <laughs> happy. And uh, Well, yeah. now, they're not the only ones that got in trouble for that. Because I was Ooh. telling you, on Netflix, there was a show called, um, it was an African-American girl. She was, I can't remember the name, because it was a Spanish-type show. They, they turned into an American show. So the title is still Spanish-ish, but the what it says is like, I am witch or something. African-American young lady who was a witch, she gets oh, taken si back in time. That's it. Yeah. She gets taken back in time, and her goal is to say, to save her white slave master's son because she wants to be in love with him. Gotcha. That's her goal. So she doesn't go back in history to free her people. No. She goes back to get her white lover, <laughs> who is her slave I master's She's son. She's Afro-Latina, okay. So she was Netflix burnt got stake. slaughtered. For, and even I was appalled. Because, I mean, I, anything that's witchy or supernatural, I'm into. So when I And she's actually a very pretty actress. She's a very yeah, she's pretty gorgeous. black girl. So when I saw it, I was like, oh, I can't wait to watch this. In the first episode... <laughs> She, I'm sorry, I can imagine. <laughs> imagine my disgust when I watch the first episode and find out that in the first episode, she's going back in time not to free her people because she has the ability, but to get Billy, the slave master's white son, so Billy? they can, I don't know how to say that. So Billy, the slave master's white son, oh. so that they can be together. She people, goes through all of this. Just to be a Billy. And Pop Buzz reported that the uh, it made people very uneasy that Carmen had this illogical desire to return to life as a slave, she, she, despite being a free woman in the modern world, which I think is important because we, there are people who are still, they still believe that African Americans were better <coughs> off on, uh, in slavery. Um, people who belong to the far right. And so the idea that we're just going to create a show where somebody actually might miss that notion of, <laughs> of not being an individual... <laughs> Uh, for whatever I reason, a, I think it's kind of crazy. I have wow. a soft spot for a good metaphor. I love a good metaphor. <laughs> I don't mind them. So, but <laughs> you cannot use a metaphor if people right. are going to catch what the metaphor right. is. Well, like, the good thing about slavery was, I mean, that's the beginning of a wrong sentence. I, <laughs> you, you just, you, you just I mean, I, 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 I sat there on the first episode. I said, I... Because I tried to finish the whole episode, mm -hmm. but it's blatant from the time that this child goes back in history 
that she's going back not to free the people, her people, but to get Billy. Who writes this crap? Like Netflix takes a lot of risks with their I mean, with, miss with Netflix. Yeah, with their content. They take a lot of risks, but they've honestly pulled shows before. Like, they've canceled shows when they became controversial. Mm. I was, ho- I thought this was can- This has not been canceled. I mean, they're still going about and doing it. Um, they definitely cancel things if their earnings are low. But they canceled a show before, and they even kind of, um, in certain parts of the country, they banned an episode of the Patriot Act with Hassan Minaj because it was critical of Iran. So I feel like when they feel like something is unsafe or unfair or unjust they do cancel well, i wonder why they have not canceled Actually, it why i feel like it's okay so i'm gonna direct it straight to you because i want your opinion so and we'll stay in this particular situation in this situation should we fault the actress or the actresses who is african-american she's the main character should we fault her for not standing up to the script and saying i don't want to play this role because this is not representative of my people or you know African Americans as a whole. Do should we put that obligation in this kind of situation? Should she have said, This is cute and I know this is Netflix, but we need to alter this because I, I cannot in good judgment and good faith represent my people in this role. Should we should should we hold her accountable for that? And any other black cast member that's in this this particular show? I feel like you can't necessarily do that because everybody doesn't have the same viewpoint as you. So maybe she really didn't see a big deal with it. Now, I feel like she should. I feel like the average person would be like, really, girl? Uh, Who knows? Maybe it just never crossed her mind. Like, you know, maybe this ain't no big of a deal. I don't know. That's how I personally feel. Because that makes me think about the whole um, H&M situation with the monkey on the shirt and all that. And people were um, saying, well, why didn't the black that little boy? And she was like, I ain't see no problem with it. So. I mean, I was with her, like I said, when the, when the twins were babies, Caleb always had on monkey stuff. Yeah. Because it's just it's just cute. And he's light-skinned, and, you know, I used to pick at him because he liked to look like a banana. So, I mean, it was cute. He was always decked out in monkey stuff. So I wouldn't... I just personally feel like we can't tell somebody how they should feel about, like, something. Like, I can't tell you this is how you should feel. I yeah, can't but in that this the regard, person. there was a script that was submitted that she auditioned for, and once she got the role, you knew the script. So well, again, maybe she power. was maybe she was a little dumb, and she just didn't realize. She kind of looked over it, and she could have just been like, you know what, ain't that deep. And maybe people came to her afterwards like, girl, maybe you shouldn't do that. Maybe it was too late. We don't know. We wasn't there, so. I always put it on the production company myself. Like, if it was just me, I always look at who decided to distribute this yeah but their goal is money so unless they're just distri- right unless they're but money can also black. bite you in the butt trying to get it the wrong can also but bite you in the butt and be a wasted investment well who wrote the script was it a black person or a white person well so but who write those type of scripts then? um considering the fact that this show came from overseas i highly doubt it was african-americans so the, i think that's the problem right there why are we why are you doing that yeah, but that's that's not gonna be that's not gonna change. It's always is i mean um, people are gonna write stuff but the person who decides oh okay this is a good idea let me just put this out, right? Because people are going to write all kinds of stuff. But to me, the actresses definitely, def- I really put that on them last. Because this is somebody's big break. This is their moment. Like, I think about that all the time. She Especially if it. I see commercials for, like, like Monistat 1 or, like, something gross. And you're How like, who there? would want to be? Oh. I'm just saying. <laughs> let me just, wait, wait, wait. Go with me. Go, was, go okay, with fine. me. Even oh. though I'm thinking, who in the heck would want to be the poster child for HPV? But that's somebody's moment. This is their big break. They called their family, they called their friends, and they said, hey, from, from 2 p.m. to 2.20 p.m., I'm going to be on TV. And that's going to go on their portfolio, and they're they're going to flip it. So I really, I feel like this is probably her shot at, uh, you know, doing being a lead character in a role. And I just think she probably, she probably let it go. She is Afro-Colombian, so it's not like she doesn't understand the culture. It's not like she's not of the culture. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That is something I think as an actress you should have some responsibility for. Like, oh, you want to play... Like like uh, Emma Stone, who was supposed to be playing a Hawaiian or Asian American, and she's white. And then that kind of stuff you're responsible for, at least thinking about. Like, well, I'm not black, but... But in this case, you know, I she mean, fit the bill. At some point, I feel like... And I normally would not blame somebody for this, but, I mean, I get it. But at the same token, I think that we still have to be mindful of how what we portray. It could have been avoided so, too, so easily. Because why didn't she just have a black love interest? <clears throat> Like, I mean, at least part of it could have been avoided. Like, the fact that she was in love with, with her oppressor. Billy. Right. <laughs> she could have at least been in masters. love with somebody who was, who was... Yeah, but then if we get into that, that's a whole other argument. Because then I, have, I take up issue with Shonda Rhimes on a lot of things. Because it, I, you don't see very many male, black male characters in a lot of her shows. Even when we watch Scandal. <laughs> Olivia had one, maybe two. 
They actually they wasn't even love interests. They were side pieces. There was Brian White <laughs> who came in vaguely. I don't even think they got involved. And I think that was oh um, her first love, which was I forgot the guy that we saw in flashbacks. But her main love interests were Fitz and um what's the other guy? Fitz and not Charlie. He's the other agent that took over B six thirteen. Um. I can't remember his name. But in any event, it was two it. Caucasian guys who yeah. were always her constant love interest. I took issue with that sometimes. Why? I was like, Chandra, you're an African-American woman. You should want to see, and you're in the writer's seat. You don't want to see Olivia with, a, with an African-American male at some point that lasts longer than two months or broken engagement. So now she's broken and now she spends all her time with Caucasian men. <laughs> Not knocking into racial dating, but if we're talking about what's portrayed and obligations that people should have. I think she may have very to... well felt the opposite, like felt that she was doing something by making the opposite message because most interracial romances on screen are not necessarily black women with white men. So I think she also might have felt like, listen, these are legitimate relationships and they don't get as much shine. I think that could have also been her her perspective. And I, I just don't think there's but so many black people on the Hill, period. In fact, I know there aren't um, because Which the Hill I Club mean, is just always small. But kind of sucks, she but could have that same idea. Required. I mean, it's, it's an obligation. That, you know, you I think wanna... the power structure makes a big difference. Like Olivia being on her knees to me for a president, like just because of who she was, she was a big deal. But when somebody's a president, I just feel like there's a power play there. It's just like with the slave and slave master romance. There is no slave and slave master romance. There's just <laughs> manipulation and rape. Like that's it. Cause the power structure is not even. So God, you made that so you unromanticize that real quick. I mean, <laughs> real quick. You can't, you can't be in love with that's what, what do they call that's what? Stockholm syndrome. Oh yeah. Yeah. Facts. So, Anyway, I hope that uh, I, I don't wish any you know mark on her career, and Actually, sometimes you know this what? does hurt people's career. I'm gonna give a shout out to Netflix because reciprocally, when they did Bird Box, Sandra Bullock's love interest was uh, Trevor, Trayvon. I think it's Trayvon. His name was John. I don't know his name. Oh, he was his great. Name. <laughs> his name was John. His name was John. I know his real name. Oh, oh. oh. like just take it to try to uh, ethnicize his character <laughs> just now. Oh my God. Anyway, I think his name is Javon. His real name is Javon. He was in Midnight. But shouts out to Netflix because reciprocally they do do good things because they've given a lot of African Americans platforms by which to platforms they probably would never gotten in main stage Hollywood. So yeah. shouts out to Netflix because even though they do bad things, they do great things too, which probably would segue us to Beachella. Yeah, right. baby, Beachella. It ain't Beachella anymore. Y'all are fired because wow. y'all neither one of y'all seen it yet, so y'all are both fired. Listen, tell us about it. Tell us about Homecoming. All right, so here's the thing. Now, I'm not by any stretch of the imagination a part of the beehive, so I don't want nobody to get that presumption. What I am a part of is an entrepreneur who understands business and takes it by the horns and rags that bad boy until the horns fall off. The reality is uh, Beyonce knew. You can tell when you watch it. It's the For those who do not know, uh, Beyonce did Coachella last year. It was amazing. She paid homage to HBCUs. It's a... It's a side of HBCUs we have not seen since the uh, Different World days. Uh, because when Different World was on, you saw that kind of stuff. You saw them in the bands. Uh, not to this magnitude, but you saw the HBCU life in general. What it's like living on campus at an HBCU, which was Hillman, which I didn't know until recently. It's not a real college. Oh, but my I digress. gosh. Do better. Everybody <laughs> wanted to go to Hillman, but I digress. They had the t-shirts and everything. Um, <laughs> but I digress. In any event, she did Coachella. She paid homage to HBCU, which is absolutely ironic. I don't think she went to one. But she says in a document that she always fantasized about it. And if she had gone to college, she would have wanted to go to HBCU. So you see all these African-American kids uh, and some Caucasians as well. There were a couple of them thrown in there too. Um, and you see them just going for broke with, with Beyonce on stage. And it was amazing. And like I said, I'm not a Beehive uh, member, but I do give props to Beyonce. I do love her music. I think it's fun. It's crazy. Um, but in the documentary, you really see the behind-the-scenes footage. I was blown away at the fact that Beyonce says that she came up with everything from the stage to the dancers. She chose everything. I believe that. And yeah. when you see this two hour show and see how amazing it is, the fact that she had a vision on that scale blew me away. Like blew me, and you see them practice, you see them bring the, the kids to her while she's practicing. She talks about how she had to take off the weight. I think she had gotten to two hundred. Uh, yeah. So she had to take off two hundred. She was recovering from C-section yeah, I mean, as well. Yeah. To, it's her artistry is amazing. And that's what you see when you see Homecoming. The artistry is amazing. Now, to get down to brass tacks, here's the deal. <laughs> Apparently, uh, and this is only hearsay, so I'm only going off hearsay, I will say that. Apparently, they paid 
uh, Ariana Grande eight million this year to Coachella, which if you saw the clips of it, couldn't even come, cl- couldn't even touch or scratch the surface of Beachella. Yeah. Um, but she was paid eight million. Now people were in an uproar about it because, of course, Ariana Grande is uh, she's not African American, um, but she does have some bangers, some hits, and she is that chick. Um, but we're talking about performance, and performance wise, she's not even remotely close to Beyonce. But here's the beauty of it, and this is where I get on folks especially African-American, I'll say students, uh, when it comes to the mindset that we have. Now, I don't know what, you know, took place behind that, but you have to look at it like this. So Beyonce got paid $4 million. Cool. Beyonce owns the rights to the performance. Right. Which she, in turn, has sold to Netflix to make a bigger check. Mm-hmm. And... She made a, a 40 song soundtrack off of Baychella. Oh, yeah, we yeah, and so we're still talking about Baychella a year later. I, I can't right. even front, even though these are not new songs. Yeah. I brought some of them because they were just amazing to hear the horns and stuff, particularly Deja Vu. To hear the horns and stuff, it was amazing. I so I it. actually went and brought some of the songs off the soundtrack. So not only did she get a full me and bag from Coachella, she got probably about another, we'll say, I'm just throwing out there, mm-hmm. probably about 10 million bag yeah. from Netflix. And she'll probably get another million or two from the album sales. Yeah. This chick just made double, actually probably 60, about triple it's her, her a money. It's $60 million dollar deal. deal. And $60 she million got dollar deal. for three projects. And yeah. she got a deal with Netflix. So yeah. she probably done made about six, she probably made about 60 million off this, whereas Ariana Grande probably got a measly 8 million. You got to think like that. It's not about what you get out the door. It's about what you get on the back right. end. So on the back end, you got to respect the hustle. This is entrepreneurs. This is how you think. Sometimes it's not about what people write a check for you in that moment, but it's about what can I own when I walk away from this table yeah. that I can use later on. So shouts out to Beyonce. We talking about the business aspect. Forget the music. The business aspect. The oh, fact yeah. that she's an amazing artist and she understands the business. That's what I'm yep. talking about. Shouts out to Matthew for teaching her that. Because nobody going to tell me that. That's not who taught her. That's true. Shouts out to That's Matthew true. for teaching her that. All right. Franchise, baby, think big. We're going to take a break. Okay. <laughs> we'll be back for the second hour of Leadership Plan in just a few moments. Until I, until I, until I love you, I love you, I love you. Until I find a way, the only words I know that you. Until I, until I say, the only words I know that you. Until I. I know you see it, girl. This ain't sitting real good in my soul. Everywhere this little girl goes, she pick up another obstacle. Was my heart. I don't know the tribe or the fall. But by default, she don't think of me. I thought she was an Indian. She be slanging things like a simian. Uh, all my life, I wouldn't be an Indian. Now she's far away. I know you see it, girl. This ain't sitting real good in my soul. Everywhere this little girl goes, she pick up another obstacle. She was my heart. I don't know the tribe or the fall. But by default, she don't think of me. I thought she wasn't in the end. But she be slanging things. Ooh, man, let me tell you something. 
right here. I saw me a pretty young gal. Girl was looking like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She was looking like, nah, nah, nah. You know what I'm saying? But the, the girl, the girl talked too much. I told her it could be all real simple. It's a real simple process, this love thing. That's what I tell, what I tell her right here. I said, you feeling me and I'm feeling you. What we gonna do? Shut up and group. Ricardo Rice, we going to stick with that because I ain't got another name. No, they <laughs> laughed at me because they rude, and I had to get some chips because I was kind of hungry. Nobody told me, so I got a chip almost in my mouth, and then she comes back on. We know about your blood sugar. I know you got <laughs> You got to have some chips. Yeah, I know it's important. It's the hard life of an entrepreneur. I know it's important. Um, okay, so we got a, a couple of kind of big stories, I think. Uh, so I we, we know I love criminal justice reform. This is my number one issue. I actually went to a breakfast last week uh, with the Georgia Public Policy Foundation, and I'm going to a summit this uh, Wednesday in Georgia because there's a lot on the table as far as justice reform goes. Justice reform is not just about um, people getting second chances, although that's a big part of it. April is Second Chance Month uh, at the federal level. It's also about the fact that our interactions with police are increasingly hostile. Uh, if you watched the news this morning, you saw that a teenager's head was slammed into the ground. He was, it was bleeding. Wait, what? what? Yes. So that was that just happened this morning. Teenagers fine. Oh wait, just, what about deceased. optics? What are the optics? Like was it the a optics black was child a big party? A... Yes, black child, uh, white officer oh, who has now God. been benched. Oh, not benched. He's been put on administrative duty only. Um, is that really deterrent from? Yeah. To... Look, so so justice involves all of this. It also involves um, uh, how you're treated while you're in prison, right? So Alabama last month made the news because there had been an increasing number of prisoner deaths, um, and because sheriffs had I guess been using the stipends that they get for food to line their own pockets, like all kinds of scandals with regard to being in prisons. So uh, if you want to, RDW, you can announce the story about South Carolina, which I think is, <laughs> is pressing. So and then I'll get into it. this, uh, this uh, Texas situation. Well, wait, you uh, have to go situation. first. I had to restart my computer. Sure, so sure. So to... in Texas, and this is just so everybody knows, um, voting rights are an issue in and of themselves, right? So we saw with the Abrams and Kemp situation in Georgia last year, and we've seen across the country that uh, access to the ballot is very important. Um, that the ease of which we can cast our votes um, and the fact that they'll be counted is all very important, especially as we talk about 2020 and going into the election cycle. Um, and Texas has actually announced a new law. It has passed the House. It may pass the Senate. It's called SB9, Senate Bill 9. So essentially what this bill would do is it would c make it a felony to have an error on a voter registration application. So how this would work, um, NPR reported about this, and they reported about a couple of other states, Republican states, like Arizona, who are trying to kind of curb voting. Um, Texas uh, has said they're trying to preserve the integrity of the vote. Uh, Senator Brian Hughes, um, who's a Republican in East Texas, has said that the bill is trying to crack down on people who are um, committing voter fraud crimes. Uh, he says it's not intended to trap people who are accidentally making mistakes, although it does make it a felony, whether you meant to do it or not. So if your zip code is wrong, um, if you are ineligible to vote for some reason, uh, for any reason, if you have a, an incorrect name or a different spelling on your name than your driver's license or whatever, all of these things would make it um, an automatic felony. 
which would also mean that you cannot vote because felons cannot vote in Texas. So it's essentially civil rights groups have cracked down and said that this is about, uh, this is basically a form of voter suppression because if you can be fined or prosecuted for making a mistake on a voter registration card, basically what you're trying to do is deter people from voting. And I think that does work. Um, in, in Alabama, they talked about this back in, uh, in 2012 because there were people who were not allowed to vote and the, the state made it a, I think a misdemeanor or some sort of a smaller crime. Actually, I'm gonna say it was a fine if they did vote anyway, and people just didn't vote as much because they were like, I'm not really willing to risk um, having to pay a fine if I'm not supposed to vote. And the reason why this is confusing, y'all, is because if you're, a few examples, say you're a renter and you change addresses on a regular basis. Like when I first moved to Georgia, I had a different place every eight months, maybe six months because- Wow, what kind of you have? I didn't wanna, because I found something better. And like, or like the, the increase was like, I'm like, well, this ain't worth it. I like, I'm not interested in, in living here at this Wait, price. Wait, that means you have to have, you must not price. get year leases. Sometimes I offer them, sometimes I don't. But sometimes the six month would be like a better for me for whatever reason, like maybe school would be getting out or maybe for some reason six months was just better price wise. And after six months, or I didn't know the neighborhood and I was like, I don't want to commit to a year because I don't know if I'm going to like this neighborhood or the residence. What type so. of... <laughs> <laughs> No, it's not normal. normal. Listen, no, listen. It's not. It is not fun to me as a young person who was working a lot and traveling a lot to have to say, okay, well, I'm going to be here for two plus years. I can't make that kind of commitment to Nobody a place. Nobody says two plus you years, but at least it. it's me a year. But you still may hate it. Okay, so so give this an example. So we have four years in a presidential cycle, right? So if you move every year, that's still four different addresses you may have in a year. That's still quite a few addresses, especially if you have to go down in person, which you do, to get your voter registration card changed or your address changed. That's still like... At least I used to very much slack on doing that because you can get away with an old address and a valid driver's license. Well, here's You're my... right. I need to change my own address on my ass. Boom. Felony. Here's the... Right there. So, so that's, that's my point. So anyway, people are transitional. A lot of people, not older people, not people who are established, not people who may be a certain political party. They don't move a lot. But a lot of young people move a lot. So, I mean, I definitely feel like this could be a situation where there are income reasons why someone's voter registration doesn't match their ID. I think also where this comes into play is that if you are accused of a crime, you are given a set of probation rules. Mm. That's not necessarily in line with the law. So you may learn that you can't carry a gun. You may learn, um, you get one piece of paper. It may say that you can't live with other felons. Maybe it says you have to pay fines. It doesn't necessarily say that you are allowed to vote or not allowed to vote or anything like that. So a lot of people, I don't believe, know that they're not allowed to vote. A woman actually got 10 months this past uh, November for voting because she thought she was allowed to. She had paid her probation. She paid her fines. And this was like a 10-year-old conviction. And uh, she wasn't allowed to vote because they take your rights away forever. She didn't know that. She thought she figured she was on probation. She could vote. And she did. And she got 10 months and went back to jail. And so it's six what? Other, yes, in Texas. So it's six other people. A black woman who has a lawyer right now. She has an attorney. So... But yeah, seven people so far in Texas have already gone to jail for this um, on a misdemeanor. Now they're trying to make it a felony. So even more people presumably could go to jail for voting when they're not supposed to. Hey, here's the thing. And, and Why I are we want... sending people to jail? Just... Okay. But it's a bigger picture. So in the bigger picture, when people say my vote does not count, when you see stuff like this, that should tell you how important your vote is. When you see people going through all these links to try to get you and throw you in jail so that you can't vote anymore, right. this alone should tell right. you how important your vote is. Right. That's first and foremost. Right. Secondly, look, and you said this off the air when we were talking about this, it's whenever you make a certain set of laws, there's always repercussions to that law. So now we're making this a felony? Mm -hmm. So if Because we saw this yeah. in Georgia. That, that was how uh, Kemp was able to disqualify some folks because, oh, Shakisha forgot that there was an apostrophe when she wrote her name because she was writing it real quick trying to get to the nail salon, so she forgot to put the apostrophe that's on her driver's license in right. her name. So now Shakisha can't vote. Slip, uh, apostrophe. Mm -hmm. Or you didn't get to the place to change your last name yeah, or whatever the like case may be. Months or, whatever. or if you didn't vote in the last three years, like they would just drop you off. Yeah, this, these purging yeah. rules, these purging laws they keep trying mm -hmm. to come up with, they're saying, oh, well, if you don't vote in a major election in a three-year cycle, no, now you no longer want to vote. What is the premise? Right. Oh, well, you don't have an interest in voting. What? I could have been out of the country. I could have been, it couldn't been get off work. It could be any number... This is the foolishness that we're encountering <laughs> yeah. that nobody pays attention to. So don't tell me that your vote does not matter when these clowns are sitting around trying to find new ways to new get your vote, ways. new and interesting ways <laughs> to get your me. vote or keep you from voting. So I don't want to hear that crap anymore. You heard it on the leadership blend on April 22nd. Don't tell me your vote does not matter when people have gone through great lengths to find legislation, mm -hmm. legal ways to get rid of your vote. So don't tell, I don't want to hear that anymore for anybody saying that my vote does not count. Your vote does count. Oh, if it yeah. didn't count, people wouldn't be trying to get it. 
Oh yeah. Which is ironic considering the fact that it what they just gave a million people back writing voting rights in Florida. Yep. Only to try to find new ways to get it from them. Yep. So in Florida, they passed Amendment Four last year, which said that felons can now vote as soon as their probation's done and they've technically served their time. But the reason Florida's having a problem now is because their the election office, which is usually the Secretary of State, they are not in communication, I guess, with the state, with the uh, uh, criminal office, with the uh, probation offices, with the sheriff's offices. So they don't know who is on probation and who isn't on probation. So they felt like, well, we're probably going to allow just a whole bunch of people to vote and not know and take them at their word. Th here's the thing. We did not always have laws against felons voting. When we got laws against felons voting was around the time that um, uh, Jim Crow uh, was, in, was in this country where you could legally discriminate against people. That's when we started having felony voting laws. It was never a thing before. And at the very beginning of this country, nobody could vote unless you were a white, wealthy uh, male, obviously, like a very, very, very small amount of people. So people think that felon voting rights are these sorts of things that it's like, oh, we're using it to penalize people. But penalizing people involves jail, it involves money, it involves uh, you can't have a weapon, it involves that. It doesn't involve voting in terms of public safety because election fraud is still highly debated that it's even an issue among especially among citizens um it, there's like i think it said 11,000 cases that they found in the country over the last 20 plus years of voters who committed quote-unquote voting fraud and most of them are un, uh, excuse me undocumented persons so what this is about is about trying to keep people from voting trying to make people afraid to vote because like like if you if you make a logical determination that, listen, I don't know if I'm good, I don't know if I'm not good, so I'm just going to stay home, mm. that's just what most people will do. Nobody wants to go to jail for trying to vote. Um, so anyway, Texas is, is a state that's doing this. Like I said, it passed the House. Um, we'll see if it passes the Senate before the, end of, uh, before the end of this session. But this is one of the reasons why it's so important to figure out who is passing the laws where you are. Um, What's again, the intent at yeah. the end of the day, whenever you, for those, let's say you're watching the news and they start talking about this stuff, most time people tune out. The question becomes, what is the intent of the legislation that's being created? Like, what is the intent behind this law? Clearly, right. I mean, it's kind of blatant. Well, the same thing we saw here when it was um, Abrams against Kemp. It's kind of blatant. Yeah. You're sitting in this particular office that regulates the voting, and all of a sudden you can do all these things, but nobody says anything. Mm -hmm. Come on, people. They, they're getting blatant with it. When they start you, getting blatant... think about it, just logically speaking, so how much does it cost to put somebody in jail? Like $30,000 a year, maybe, depending on where you are, if it's California, Texas, or whatever. So it costs that much money. To put, so you're going to put that person in jail, spend that much money because they cast a ballot, a single ballot. Like that, How does that make any sense economically as, as, a, as a state? It makes no sense. Mm. And I'm pretty sure the only way to enforce something like this is if you go looking for those people. So that means once the ballots are cast, somebody's going to have to have a new job or extend their job and extend their time to figure out who the felons are or, or grab a list of felons and figure out if they voted, which you could do in the first place by yeah. not allowing them to even be registered. Uh, well, like the problem is that Beatrice and um, <laughs> Cephas who sit at the polling booths don't have anything else to do. So they'll happily get a list and go down for two and six, between two and six hours highlighting stuff because they ain't got nothing else to do. All they can do is go back to the nursing home. They ain't got nothing else to do. So it, uh. I just hate that this is something the state can control. Like they know who's allowed to vote and who isn't. Clearly they know even if former offenders don't know because it's not listed on their probation records whether or not they're allowed to vote. It's just a part of the state law and they just assume it's a given. So... If you know who's allowed to vote and who isn't at any given moment, like if there's a waiting period or whatever, then why are you allowing people to break the law and then punishing them for breaking the law? Why not just prevent them from breaking the law it seems like there should in be the first place? In place to tell them to let them know you can't vote. I don't there know, should be a letter, not a letter. I don't know, just something. Like, there should be, vote. or you shouldn't be taking my ballot. Like you just shouldn't be taking my ballot. This is part of the reason why I was saying, like, listen, even though you 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 cringe at the idea of electronic making it electronic to vote. Hey, 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 wait a minute. You criticized that idea and you felt like Stop it was Stop putting words in my scary. mouth, Sparky. You did. What I said is I don't want a machine tallying up votes. Now, a database that they can use to okay. type in a name, I don't have a problem with that. Okay. But I don't want a machine tallying, tallying up, up votes vote. that can be tampered with. There's a difference. Okay. But a database Fair. that they're Fair. putting names in Fair. and, you know, it's kind of hard for you to, you got to prove to me and I don't have a problem with that. Okay, that's fair. So if they do that, if I can put in my social security number or whatever, then the system can reject my vote. Like I should not, you should not, I'm just saying there's a way to do this where somebody does not have to, it's almost like I feel like they're opening a door and then seeing who will go through it. 
That's just what it looks like to me. And then if you go through it, oh, boom, we got gotcha. you. Like, why do you have the door open in the first place? It's like a guy, it's like a trap. So anyway, that's uh, that's another piece of criminal justice reform. Um, I'm sure Southern Center for Human Rights or one of the other groups that I'm working with will be writing about that and advocating against it. Um, but you have South Carolina news now? Yeah, okay, all right. Okay. So on that same note, uh, the question is coming up, how much of a duty of care do we have to inmates in prison systems? Now, mind you, a lot of these uh, prisons I'm learning now are independent of states, so they're not run by states. A lot of these are, people actually own these jails or uh, companies own these jail systems, so they're like dollar signs. So how much responsibility are they supposed to have when these prisoners are in your charge? So, in my home city, it makes me very sad to announce this, but we're gonna do it anyway. So I in South Carolina- for doing that. That's journalistic of you. <laughs> journalistic integrity, go ahead. In South Carolina, uh, Alan Capers died on uh, died in prison on New Year's Eve 2017. His family is alleging that he did not get the proper duty of care uh, because apparently he was stabbed in his cell, then he was dragged into the prison yard by correctional officers who left him there. Ridiculous. When they watched the surveillance, they showed apparently that the prison guards went to him, but they never saw any kind of medical uh, care uh, assist them. So again, here we are with, and he's African American, so here we are with how much responsibility do these prison systems have to ensure the highest duty of care for prisoners in our prison systems, particularly in, in what we're seeing now, minorities. And that's not just uh, limited to African Americans. We'll throw some other, we'll throw the other minorities in there as well. What is the duty of care to this? Is it something that we just shouldn't care about because you shouldn't be in jail? Or, I mean, should we really take a hard stance on this and say we expect in these kind of situations that there is a protocol that has to be take followed. And if that protocol says, hey, on uh, New Year's Eve 2017, which is what, January 31st? January 31st, 2017, uh, inmate Alan Capers was stabbed in his cell. And there's like a paper trail that has yes. to be followed to say that when something like this happens, not only are we going through surveillance, which can be altered. We saw it on numerous episodes of <laughs> um, Lie to Me and Scandal. Yeah. But there's a pa actual paper trail that shows, yeah. hey, we, we called the paramedics. They arrived at uh, 10.59 or 9 a.m. the next morning. This is what was happening. What are we going to do about this? There should mm. definitely be a paper trail. I have to have a paper trail for somebody getting a finger cut small like this where I work at. So why would there not be a paper trail for something as big as that? If you have a yeah. paper trail, we won't have to see articles like this, I feel like. That will, that will help out. I don't understand yeah. why there's not a paper trail. Period. Yeah, and we have rights in prison. Like, we have a First Amendment right to life. I mean, life is a part of liberty and the pursuit of happiness. That's the government's responsibility. So even though you lose all your other rights when you go to jail, you don't have a right to get killed without um, <laughs> without justice. Like, Facts. that's not, we don't, it, we don't feed you to the wolves. That's not what it is. So even terrorists have rights, let alone, you know, Americans who committed just, you know, crimes. Um, you left him for dead. Yeah, apparently he was stabbed yeah. in his cell. That's crazy. And um, dragged into the, the yard and just kind of left there. Wow. I mean, it doesn't do anybody any justice because what's going to happen now is the Capers family going to sue them. They don't have any any uh, evidence to refute what happened. And they went up, the state went up paying them money, which is probably not going to be some small sum of money because I can promise you there's... I don't want to be nasty, so I'm not going to say what I was getting ready to say. Ahead. I can promise you... I was going to say a bottom feeder, but I don't want to say that. I can promise you there is a firm, a law firm that is ready, willing, and able to take on these kind of cases because they know it's going to be a big payday. So if you're dumb enough, because most of these small places are complaining about these uh, lawsuits that are not protected by immunity from government officials, the ones that are able to get around it, they're complaining about how much these lawsuits cost because they're up towards the millions of dollars that you're having to pay somebody in situations like this. Well, why don't we just do the right thing? If we do the right thing, we'll have to worry about stuff like this. Yep. Oh my God, it says, so it says he was lying in a pool of his own blood outside of his cell. So this reminds me of, if you saw any of the documentary of uh, Khalif Browder, when they had all that video footage of him. So Khalif, um, he, he's now committed suicide, but he spent three years in jail um, in New York. He was actually at Rikers and he had never even been on trial yet. And they put him in solitary for like half the time, more than half the time that he was there. There was all this video of him basically being uh, beaten by guards, like loads of video. He was also being, uh, he was jumped by lots of other inmates at a couple times too. And the guards, you saw them like taking their dear sweet time to break it up or, you know, they couldn't basically keep people off of him because he's so small and I guess he's such an easy target. So he ended up in solitary for m most of the time. But 
when you look at those videos, you just kind of wonder, like, how do how do those people retain their jobs? Like, because we you always hear this immediate defense that they have such hard jobs. Like, correctional officers have such hard jobs. It's such a difficult job. It's there's so many people to watch, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But it's like if that's the case then this is beyond your capacity to deal with. Like, I just feel like you, maybe we just shouldn't, you can't just neglect your job and allow people to die and then say, well, it's a hard job. I mean, that to me, is it's not an excuse. Well, most of the time these prisons are short because I know in South Carolina, which is where I'm from, um, they were always hiring for correctional officers. They just never could get enough. And um, that in itself was a problem. not even just in South Carolina. I just feel like they're always hiring for um, correctional officers. Too. I just saw sure. a sign the other day. So I'm sure. But that can't be the excuse. That the mere fact that we don't have enough manpower to control the yard is right. not an excuse. Like then we got to come up with a better conclusion. Even yeah. if the state itself has to get involved, uh, th- this just can't be acceptable. And there was a riot in South Carolina last year too. Yeah, this this stuff cannot be acceptable. You know, and shouts out to the Capers family. Don't let it go. These people should not be I treated agree. like animals. Like you I'm know, just this- shocked that they admitted to that. The Department of Corrections in South Carolina, because I feel like state correctional departments never admit to anything. Well, like, they have they a never... choice. They have surveillance. The lawyers well, have surveillance, so they well, have true. a choice. What are you gonna say? True. Apparently, the video showed the guards walking up to Allen and nothing happening after that. So what are you gonna say? Oh, the video cut out. Well, even with the video cut back in, you mm-hmm. should see some ambulance and some some people, some right. EMT people. That's fair. We're still not seeing it. So That's what do you? Fair. What is your defense? I wonder if it goes up to the head, or if it should go up to the head. Well, I mean, at some point. It's, so in Arizona, when this uh, something similar to this happened, only it wasn't that someone died; it was just that uh, it was someone was raped. Um, and this, the Department of Corrections, I mean, they kept saying we're looking into it, we're looking into it, we're looking into it, and there was ultimately an investigation, but they never came out and said, "Oh, we were wrong" or "We apologize." Like they just never seem to do that. They're always like, "Oh, there's um, there's an accusation uh, that there was no water in a facility in Arizona," and the Department of Corrections said, "We always have water. There's plenty of water." Like. There's just so little accountability, I feel like. There's a distance between corrections and the rest of, of government. When we demand accountability of government, we want to know how much you spend True. and what you got and what you don't have and who you have on staff and who you don't. And if you fail to file reports timely, but when it comes to corrections, we don't have that same level of like checks and like you need to do this and you need to do that. But why is that, though? Is it because they're like independent contractors and not run by states? I think that's part of it. And I think that for government to do anything, there has to be a lot of political uproar about it. And because a lot of people don't care per se about prisoners and inmates, that's why there hasn't been one. So like for the most ugly things, um, in the state of Georgia, like we were shackling pregnant women as they gave birth. Oh, there was um, just a um, law that's coming into effect about that. Yeah, just now. And there isn't one in every state. There's one in, I think, 13 states. Um, well, no, they passed it at the federal level with the First Step Act. But before that, there was only one in like 13 states. So things like that, like where we're literally like you have to shackle a pregnant woman to a bed. And it took for people move behind somebody it. to fall and have a miscarriage yeah. just to get to yeah. that point. So it's like, when it gets that ugly, I think people care. I think it depended on that, they don't so much. Because I, I really think a lot of people don't understand that, or, or they believe that if you're an inmate, that you've done something wrong. When they don't know how the justice system works and how many people are innocent and are behind bars all the time and are there for a very long time. And the fact that we don't have tears um, in our jails, especially especially in our jails. So mass murders are in there with oh, DUIs yeah. and with people who bounce parking tickets and I mean, all different levels of human beings. And when you're in the same spot like that, stuff happens. Um, so the reports, I guess, from for this situation said that they had radioed in main control as soon as possible, but they found out that that was not true. I guess that's what I'm understanding. Um, this makes me want to follow the Twitter accounts of the Departments of Corrections because <laughs> they released what? this out of Departments of Corrections. It's been a year and a half and no one has been charged with murder and it, they literally went on Twitter and finally, um, I guess Caper's mother, like you said, Deborah Dixon, is the, is what made them finally tweet out some sort of a response. So we got to go to Twitter to figure out what Trump's doing. got to go to Twitter to figure out if people are, aren't being slain. Um, <laughs> who haven't Clearly done anything new thing. I mean, I never thought I'd be looking at Twitter, which I still can't really navigate. To look for do, stuff. You watch, do you look at Twitter? Like, do you I love Twitter. 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 Okay. Oh, wow. That gives me hope. How many followers you got? I feel like I got like 500, 600, something like that. What are you talking about? You get to 1,000. Look. That makes you a pro when you get to 1,000. I do go to Twitter for weather updates all the time, though. Like, if you look at Twitter for like the city of Marietta or like city of Smyrna, or like when we get those, uh, so we get um, radio alarms every Wednesday, like to test the city emergency system. Oh, good grief! And so, but but I hear it in the first, especially the first couple uh, months that I was here, I was like, what the heck is that noise? And then I checked our city's Twitter, and I was like, oh, oh my God. so it can't be very useful. I only use Twitter for entertainment news when I mean, what's trending. Twitter, I will hilarious. give them that. No. That hurt my heart. What? I'll give them that hurt that. my heart. 
What? I'll because give me. People the, are um, using these incredible resources for this. <laughs> I mean, that's the only thing I would think about using it for is to. What? Are you, well, yeah. What? Are, well, is people, entertainment and what's trending? Yeah. Well, hashtags. Twitter is used hashtags. to get people fired too. So. Wait, what? Explain. You know, like when people are. Tra- Black Twitter will find you trash. Oh you my down. God! Black They'll get you fired. Black Twitter is filled with memes and <laughs> <laughs> you know, filled with memes and, and like emojis. I, outside of that, like that's a tool. Like you said, they use for hashtags. Like you click on the hashtag, then boom. True. True. Oh my God! Black Twitter. I, I don't even know why we Shout call out it black to Black Twitter. Twitter. I don't know why we call it <laughs> Black Twitter. What does it really do? <laughs> Does it help with the black agenda? I think so. Look what happened with R. Kelly in the, the documentary. Black it gives me my joy for today. So that's because you yeah. probably find a new emoji to use on Facebook. Emoji. It's ridiculous. Or face- a new uh, meme to use on Facebook. First of all, I think we'll it, post also, it on Facebook. I think it also uh, redeemed Jordan's career. Plenty of us to use Facebook. You might not, I, but we do. My people don't use Facebook. My generation, no, that's a thing in the past. Oh my God. Well, yeah, we we'll <laughs> use Twitter. Lord, we, we can I'm get, concerned. We can get more generations in a second. We're gonna take our. Third break, and then we'll be back to the leadership plan on our V next with Simone Sheree. I need some chips. One, two, three, four. I love the way it flows. I love the way it grows There's something in this sound that takes me far It's like a special song Can move my mood along But I cannot say you'll hit through my guitar She told me at the baseline And everything will be alright She told me that the groove is mine It will take us through the night And where I'll go can't explain, I'll never know, but it's beautiful. You can't take this away from me. The way I hear the melody, the way it's bring clarity. Running through me, you can't take this away from me. Oh, the way I hear the melody, the way it's bring clarity. Running through me, I love the way it sings, all the joy that it brings. Remember skating down the road towards the park I can never say no You with that summer glow The music gives me sun when winter starts She told me at the baseline That everything will be alright She told me that the beat is mine It will rock us through the night And where I go But it's beautiful You can't take this away from me Oh, the way I hear the melody The waves bring clarity Running through me You can't take this away from me Oh, the way I hear the melody The waves bring clarity Running through me Welcome back to the Leadership Blend with Simone Cherie, and I'm joined by Jess Jazz and Ricardo D. Rice. Okay, so I have a quick PSA that I'd like to make. So even though April April is Second Chance Month, of course, but it's also Financial Literacy Month. Um, there's a month for everything. Yes, there is. And what this kind of reminds me of, uh, I had a conversation with a young person who I will just refer to as Generation Z Girl over the weekend. Um, when I was doing Easter Sunday work and she was telling me that she was broke and we were discussing what her plans were because she is in high school and planning to go off to college. Um, and she, uh, she gave me a quick look at her mint doc, like her mint.com app. And I saw how she was spending her money and I was shocked that, um, it was basically going to iTunes, Apple, the Apple store. It was going to Netflix. It was going to Hulu. It was going to Poshmark. Um, and she was just spending her little money away and also had no idea why she had no money. And then I saw a report in NPR about how millennials and Gen Z expect to retire at some point, but are not actually actively saving. And I thought that that was tragic. Can't um, relate. What? 
You said can't relate? Nope. I, my Are you a has, saver? Yes. My grandma always taught you how to be a saver because Christine you're now in the minority. Ross, shout out to her. So do you have a strategy for how you save? I always put like at least $20 in my savings account. So do you do, I, so for yeah. me, it's anytime I get paid or yeah. anytime I have it, I just yeah. save it. For and other I, people, it's like a different time. My savings account is not even with um, my main bank. It's in an account I'm not going to mm-hmm. touch. So That's a good idea. I think that's a really good idea. Now what? Are right. you a saver? No. They say people are savers or spenders. I'm actually in the middle. I'll save and spend. So I'm not going to front. I just, after I quit my job, I got my 401k and it's pretty much already gone. But I okay. made investments and stuff that will yield returns. And with what I do, I had to. Yeah. Um, but I think there's this ideology because I can, I can say I was guilty of it. That when you're young and, and fun and, you know, you don't think about those kind of things. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, I, look, I'm, I'm only 21. I got like another 20 years. Why do I think about that? Yeah, and that was the case. But now... Bam. I just turned around. I'm almost 40. And yep. I'm just like, whoa. Yeah. Because, like, for a graduation gift, I asked my people for stocks. So, I be, I'm always thinking. I don't want to be broke. So, you think you're better than me because you, no. you plan better? That's like, important, though. That's like what you do you, do, you, do you evangelize this to your peers, to your peer group? No, because no. you're antisocial. I don't. <laughs> but, look, the, the reason I'm saying this is because I believe this should be required education. And I always have believed it should be required education. Not just, like, budgeting, even though it's very important. You know what's crazy? But credit investing you know what, is crazy? what in um high school we took economics and my teacher it wasn't in the um curriculum or whatever they have to do mm-hmm. she gave us a whole lesson on credit a whole month that's important that's where i learned that and we had a class on like budgeting financing and all that but it was like you want to go to college it's not going to count as a math class that was well, crazy no. to me but that should be everybody's going to use this regardless but it's not math but i still feel like that's something like life it should be a required like what you were just saying i agree it should be required it should definitely so. be required because people just don't have basic literary, literacy skills. And you can mess up your credit before you even know what credit is in that case. Because when you're when I was 16, I started getting credit card offers in the mail. And by the time I was 18, 19, I definitely had credit cards. So, and, and it, one summer can ruin your whole credit. Uh, summer? <laughs> not one Who summer. Who needs a summer? One, um, <laughs> I'm saying. one department store credit card can ruin your whole credit. Yeah. That's very, very true. And yeah, my, um, I learned that lesson the hard way. My dad tried to warn me. Mm-hmm. I wasn't trying to hit it. I was like, I'll be fine. I'll get... Look, first credit that ruined me. See, no, my, first step for me was my first, uh, my first struggle, which was I was in college. It was my first struggle. So I went into college with great credit, left with terrible credit, and it took me six years to get it back. So it's tough. It's very tough. And you can make. I could have made bigger mistakes. You know what I mean? Like there's people with tens of thousands of thousands of thousands of, of credit card debt because when you're, I just remember turning 18 and just seeing all those offers. So anyway. <laughs> Financial literacy, I think, is incredibly important. Um, I think people need to know about credit. They definitely need to know when stuff falls off the report. They need to know about bankruptcy, which I also think they really push bankruptcy to young people a lot, too. Like, I swear they do. Hell, they push it to adults, too. Yeah, and they and a lot of people don't know the consequences of that. No, so they do not. That's my PSA. I think it's important. I think people should learn, uh, should understand financial literacy, and they should learn that credit is not money. They should mm. learn there's no such thing as free money, and well, they should now, to live it, under their means. But well, we now. Offer- <laughs> Well, no, because the United States offer like that. We have all this the trillion debt, which is pretty much credit, credit that we don't know how we ever gonna get it down, and we keep adding to the, the national debt. So that's terrible. That's kind of a, a United States culture that we yeah. use credit as cash when it's not. And here's the thing: when you have money, when you're loaded, fine, have debt. You can have debt. Um, Ryan uh, Shelter will say this all the time. Anybody who's like, who, if you have a lot of money and you're using debt to finance what you're doing, that's great. That doesn't apply to, I think, the 16 and 17 and 22 and 23-year-olds that we're really talking about here. You don't need to walk around with the average, with a 400 credit score or 500 credit score, because that's just not going to... Just don't do it. Predatory lenders, they'll be waiting in the door for <laughs> just you. Just don't do it. So, okay. Do we have something we want to cover? All right, so I have two two things. All right, number one. Yes, Jesse Smollett is still around. So, apparently... <laughs> The Cook County State Attorney, Kim Fox, not only called him a liar, she said he's a washed-up actor who lied to the cops. In <laughs> her statement last Tuesday. Mm. She went on to compare him to R. Kelly, and she said... Washed-up actor? Washed-up actor. Not ugly. Go ahead. <laughs> washed-up actor. She went on to say, quote, uh, she was comparing him to R. Kelly, and she said, a pedophile with four victims, 10 counts, washed-up celeb who lied to cops, 16 counts, just because we can charge something doesn't mean we should. On a case eligible for a deferred prosecution, I think it's indic- indicative of something we should be looking at generally. So she was saying when you compare the two cases, but the mere fact she called him a washed up actor. I'm like, dang, she acting like he been out of work for 
<laughs> washed up right, was a big part. Yeah. I mean, but you, I, I guess you have to look at from where she sits. Like they wasted all these resources, only to kind of come to the conclusion that it's kind of inconclusive. So I don't, I don't even know what the outcome from his case say, was. Didn't they drop? I don't know. They dropped uh, the charges, but nobody ever definitively said, "Okay, this is a complete lie, and we can prove it." Or we're still doing an investigation, just not as heavy because yeah. we don't have a conclusive outcome. So it's kind of hard. It's, it's yeah. It proves my point. One day you're in, one day next you're day out. you're out. At one time it was all the rage. It was all we were talking about for a good eh, month, six, four to six weeks. Now nobody cares. They drop the charges. We moved on from it. No ending. No outcome. It's a great legal. Legal spaces are a gray area, and like it's not publicly available information what really happens to uh, all the facts of a case and all the details of a case. You do have to petition for that. So it's like it, the law is not black and white. He was not innocent. Like he wasn't found like you know he wasn't found not guilty because he wasn't tried. But it doesn't also mean that he was lying. Like it's not proof just because he was charged with all these counts that he wasn't a victim. So yeah, there, there's the a gray Africans, area you can exist in. But we got the big Africans running around, and they said it was paid to do it. So I mean. It was- what were we doing? That's just what they said. His brother came out, I think, over the weekend and maintained he that brother. he was he innocent. Like they all mm-hmm. kind of favor each other. Well, I know his sister, his sister as well. Yeah. But I didn't know they had another brother. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He looked like him. They favor each other. I believe no. it. Okay. And so, so, I mean, there's there's a place you can exist within this now. It, it, it does. I still feel like, because he's maintained his innocence, I, I thought we were way too harsh, way too uh, abrupt with condemning him. Um and because we don't know the facts of the case, I feel like we should give him the benefit of the doubt. I was very convinced by his interview on GMA. Um, I don't take much to, to get you. <laughs> you it was, was convincing. <laughs> don't take much to get you. It was convincing. Morning, and I still, did I, he cry? <laughs> I think he did. See, I know he did. That's a, he I was a sucker. Did. Maybe he did. Maybe he did. But well, no, he couldn't get me because I watched Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> I cry every Thursday. So good luck with that one. The motives still aren't clear to me why you would make something like this up. Actually, like he would. Actually, I'm the case. The picture that was painted, I could actually get there. I still watch Empire, so the fact that he could be the character, somebody dies this season. The fact that he could be the character that dies, I could get there. That's his only check. What's the man who when writes I wait the till show? It's his only check right now. Who writes the show Empire? Uh, Lee Daniels. Yeah. They saying they feel like he has something to do with him. I can kind of see that too. What? I don't know. How the heck you get there? You know, he did bank? Dame and all that. So oh my maybe. God, we really, doing, we really <laughs> all these conspiracies. We really, we really I'm conspiracies. just saying, we never know. If you tell me you believe in Illuminati, you fired today. I don't. It, no, that's no, not what I said. No, I'm just saying. there's nothing to believe <laughs> in Illuminati. That's how far fetched that is. What you just said. How far fetched. No, Illuminati is real, 100. percent You were fired. 100. percent Oh my God. What you just said was a conspiracy. Oh my. And Illuminati is not. No, Illuminati is 100 percent real. 100. percent I don't think it involves all the hip hop characters we know and love. But it's definitely real, 100 percent real. So you believe anyway, in rappers and politicians sacrificing babies to get success? No, I, don't, I don't know about the babies, but I know that they, I know that they have plans for Armageddon, and I know they think they'll survive it. That's what I do know. Every I also know that you, sit you in will the main not seat, see I Joseph. Learned. Joseph, see, look, this is the you truth. You fired too, Joseph. I don't what, what is happening right now. He knows the Illuminati. They are not worried thing. about it. Have you ever seen 2012? Yes. What What is that? It's got like one of those disaster. Movies. I've seen the movie, but like, what does that? <laughs> there are certain people who will know how to survive a disaster. That's because they watch The Walking Dead. If there's no, a zombie no, apocalypse no, 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 tomorrow, no. I can survive. You will, you will need a lot of money because there will be a place that is closed off that only they can get to. And unless you and I, or you, maybe you, maybe you at the end of your at the end of your goal sheet can be welcomed <laughs> into this society. But in the meantime, in between time, we would all be toast. Every last one of us. Um, Isn't that the norm? I don't think you need a special uh, secret agency. It's very agency. special and it's very secret. Even the kids of these people cannot necessarily just get I'm it. So, it's very, it's I don't know secret. if I'm disgusted right now or taken back that you actually believe this crap. I think it's going to start in 2035. You know why? Because that Social Security will not be able to pay out. That's the news article, news that I just found out. It came out this morning. Uh, the Hill's reporting Social Security admits that it won't be able to pay full funds starting in 2035. So it will start to diminish. Oh, choppy dead by then. We knew it. You'll be dead? What? <laughs> Now, 2035. That's 16 wow. years from now. I'm not trying to live. Ooh, I can't 60. believe you just <laughs> that. I'm not trying to live. That's 56 A. B 60 is a new 50. No, 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 C. No, no, no. We're not 2035 doing 35 is right around the corner, and I can't believe you just spoke that into existence. That is so I, don't know, I, don't have, I don't have a problem with that. By the time you have, look at the state of the world now, <laughs> how do you think it's gonna look in another 16 years? It may get better. You have oh, young children, she's really? decent. I mean, young people are getting better. Some of them, our administration isn't getting any better. 
Yeah, but they they'll be in administration. It's gonna be just That's like X Men. It's gonna be just like X Men: Days of Future Past. In the beginning, where you got the mutants and they wear oh, this is so crazy. I can't believe how nihilistic stuff. you are. I'm no, gonna no, buy no, Jordan let's... Peterson's book for you. You starting okay. to sound like Double R now. No hope. Yeah, just hopeless. I have hope for about till I turn about sixty. I will continue to be a light until I turn sixty. My light's going well, out. I'm getting my ticket. I'm checking so, out. So that's twenty thirty five. I'm good. Well, if they don't legalize euthanasia, you won't be going anywhere, and they don't have that in Georgia. So here's here's what I will say, people: don't count on your social security. <laughs> I haven't counted on it for a long time. Okay, uh, me make a plan. Like, make a plan to. Uh, I mean, Elizabeth Warren is trying to cancel our debt. You say her name Who one knows? more time. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? But Elizabeth's I don't see social name is security dead happening. To me. Because of this little debacle she tried. I can't be sure I pulled a wool over our eyes. That's just straight foolishness. All right, so my next story is, I want to ask y'all a question before I, I unveil the story. <clears throat> do we believe, as women, do y'all believe that there is an issue with uh, prominent men receiving sexual favors in uh, industries that it's not far-fetched that it happens in? So like a man going to a spa getting a happy ending uh, that goes beyond a massage or uh, stuff like that. Like, do we think that's still, that's unacceptable? That if you hear it, does it catch you off guard? You're like, you're absolutely appalled. Mm-hmm. Or when you hear stuff like that, you're just like, oh, another one got a head job. A blow I'm job appalled. You saying men going to the spa and getting happy endings? I ain't never about, heard of that one. We talking about <laughs> rich men. Really? Really? <laughs> Maybe because I just don't. We talking about rich men. Now, I'm not talking about average Joe. We talking about men with oh, okay, money. Okay. Not rich. Like we talking about rich. Anything happens with people who are rich. Tell us my point. Which brings <laughs> me to this story um, about Robert Kraft. Apparently, oh. he's the New England Patriots owner, and he was caught receiving sexual services at That's a right. Florida day spa. Mm. Um, and the Palm Beach State's Attorney Office spokesman Mike Edelman told CNN. Um, so apparently the judge decided to block the video so they can't actually show it in court. But um, I just was, I wasn't taken back of what happened. I was taken back that this is an actual court case. He's not doing what no other rich person isn't doing anyway. So I think broke people do. I mean, I, what I mean is I think this happens at, at spas all across the country, unfortunately. I don't think it's a question of how rich you are. Um, happy endings. Anybody can get a happy ending, I think, with an extra 20 bucks, maybe. I, I just don't think it's that. I mean, at various levels. I mean, I guess I'm just, I, I'm, the question, and again, when I look at these kind of stuff, my immediate question is, who brought this up? Like, I'm why, like, why, why is this up? in court? Now, is there something more to it? I mean, it's, uh, it's illegal. Yeah, it but illegal. it's illegal when everybody else does it. Like, I don't, I don't. I think, I saw this on a, a small claims court, and it was a TV show court case, but it was an inverse. So the mas- masseuse was male, the uh, patron was female, and she was suing him because he massaged her butt, and she said she did not want that. He said that's part of my standard massage. I massage, but I did get the whole back. I mean, if it's a whole body, I mean, you're gonna touch your butt. She cheeks. felt violated by it and actually took him to court. He must was so, ugly. <laughs> maybe he was. He was ugly. Maybe he was. Now that was, he was uh, Carol Owens or somebody time. giving Carol rubbing her Owens. butt. She'd can be we, happy. Can we and, the, okay, well, okay. Reggie Bush. I don't know. I'm just pulling out names. Well, put somebody, Jazz. I don't. Yeah, you put somebody. Junior. Okay. Who? Odell Beckham Jr. What? He's cute. Uh, Metro Sex. Okay. Um, but if Odell Beckham Jr. was massaging her. Uh, Gluteus Maximus. <laughs> she Is there a, a black it. man? Oh, you meant this guy. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I was thinking, was there a black man who's been implicated in this sort of a thing? <laughs> but I don't think there are. Uh, no, because are of when white athletes men. go to massage parlors, everybody gets a bulletin, so everybody try to run and all of a sudden get a massage license so they can get that bag. <laughs> but I'm just saying, in this particular case, I mean. I don't, I don't, I didn't think this was, a, but I guess that's what is really disturbing me these days. Everything that is kind of unwritten rules is now a thing. So the fact that a rich man is getting a happy ending at a day spa, that's a thing now? Because it's never been a thing. Like when I say a thing, meaning you could end up in court for it. Like that's never been a thing unless you're unattractive and broke. Then that's a thing because then they're going to say that you tried to rape them or something to that extent. Then it's a thing. But rich men... Going to day spas, getting happy endings, and doing. I guess the question things. is like, did somebody offer him a happy ending, or did he insist, "I'm a rich man, give me a happy ending"? It wasn't. It wasn't that good. That's what I feel like. <laughs> that's what I'm My, I think that rich people well, have no, not figured out that they can't. I feel like if you have money, you should be trying to fly under the radar. Why do you think people are not going to figure out anytime you step a toe out of line? Like they're <clears throat> they're being watched. Like you're going to be. People are going to be tweeting and texting about the fact that you're here. Why are you doing stuff like this? Like it's just not going to work. 
Well, I guess on the opposite side, maybe he didn't tip the masseuse enough money, mm. so she'll take she them down. Y'all are trying money. to find some <laughs> reason why. <laughs> She There's gotta be, be look, again, he's not the only man that has done this, so why is his case in court? Because he's rich and he owns a team? Maybe but- he was forceful. Maybe he was like, I get happy. Maybe he was entitled. <laughs> maybe he was white and entitled. Who knows? How he, I mean, maybe he could be he the perp in this situation. Can you do that again? I get happy in <laughs> I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Y'all get on my nerves. People do start... People do get entitled. Like, you know, if you've ever seen rich people get a like not get first class, like they they tend to cut up and act out of character. I mean, Maybe rightfully so. Literally, when I'm, when I'm rich, so. when I'm rich, and I'm supposed to be on first class with my um filet Let me mignon. Tell you what is gonna be different in first class? Not that Let me rich. tell you something. It's dead in the economy. You're not above the rules. You're not above the procedures. Aren't I? So now I'm really feeling like this. No, <laughs> no, thou aren't. aren't. When not I get aren't. rich, aren't no, I? When I'm rich, absolutely not. You know what? I, look. I went through. Listen, I was going through a pre-check, and there was a. I'll call her Monica. She was a white female. She was in front of me, and pre-check has the rules that even though you're paying for like expedited service through the airport, there are rules and you, there are random security checks, and you can get pulled. I went through. She got pulled, and she almost lost her ponytail. She was <laughs> furious. She said, "What do you mean?" And uh, the generic line was through the back door, <laughs> and they said, "Ma'am, I'm sorry, you've been randomly pulled." Now, for two seconds, I felt bad for her, and then she showed her you know what, and was and was like, had this look on her face like, you let her go through and I can't go through and had to pick up her Louis bags and go to the gym. And she was <laughs> furious. She was fuming. And I was like, you know what? That's what she get. She needed to go to the regular line well, because for two seconds she thought that she was above the rules. Well, if it makes you feel any better, I don't thought I have any of those problems. I have a private jet. So yeah. I just want to let you know, I don't thought I have any of those problems. So you never have to rub me showing my behind in an airport because I won't be in an airport. I'll be on my private ramp, getting on my private jet, don't going to where I need to go. Don't you still have to go, go to TSA, though, to get to your private jet? If it rains, there? are you going to be mad at the pilot? If what? If there's a storm, are you going to be mad at the pilot? Yes, because you should notice what we get before I even board this plane. Oh, my God. You just send a message to my now private I office see. and tell my secretaries. Now I see. Not secretaries. Yeah. Oh, secretaries. secretaries. That Mr. Rice cannot fly today because it's gonna be bad weather, and unless you're a storm and can control it, then I shouldn't be flying. So yes, he's gonna be fired. Yes, he will be fired. And I'll tell him find me new, new pilots. What would Jesus say? What would Jesus do? Jesus would say the same thing. Well, Jesus actually, would Jesus will control not, the weather, ooh, so he would be like, be "We're flying." This. Ooh, just say he would say, "We're flying." Blasphemous. Change the weather, we'd be good. But since I don't have those kind of powers, he's fired for not telling my office that we couldn't fly today. It's not my job to know the weather. Well, you're not there yet, so. <laughs> amen. Amen. <laughs> Just giving y'all a heads Jesus. up so y'all won't be surprised. Well, he switch up on us. We know exactly. why. I don't, I don't want any problems because all y'all going to be able to say is what well, It sounds like us. it's going to be nothing but problems. This is very bad. This is very bad. I think the world should be afraid of, of that, that level of Ricardo. Well, if Trump can be the demigod in the multiverse, why can't I? Look, That's Trump, and saying. Trump probably also expects happy endings. Um, <laughs> Trump probably gets happy endings because people know that, you know, hey, it is what it is. I'm just saying. <clears throat> so, okay, so get, getting on the note of, of what's considered quote unquote white entitlement. Um this came up again in another situation with Charlemagne the God. He oh, we were God. on the Breakfast Club. Um we were kind of talking about uh, a situation with Howard University. So a lot of colleges kind of incorporate their campuses that are in the so city. About them walking them dogs. Yes. What? So oh white God. people could not walk their dogs <laughs> on an area of Howard University's campus that they felt should be it. open to the public and open to everyone. Um so they complained. Um, and essentially said that, you know what, this yard is for public utility. We have our dogs. Uh, lots of people love their dogs, quote unquote. Um, and they believe that as pet owners, they ought to be able to walk their dogs, I guess, on what is considered the yard. So now, um, now at this point, the college's interim dean has released a statement. But at the time, this was a complaint that went from a citizen, actually, I think a handful of citizens, um, about how that space was being appropriated. And they said, this is our yard. I mean, uh, I don't think the dog issue is that big of a deal. Like, now when the um, people are around the neighborhood are trying to make them quiet down on their activities that they do and stuff like that, yeah, but dogs, it ain't that deep. We got dogs all on Tuskegee campus. You don't see us out here hollering. So, <laughs> get over it. That's I, how bougie Howard people are. So, I just don't think it's don't that deep. You think it's campus. about the university? Hmm? You don't think that those, you know, I've been to Howard's campus DCites are kind of being ridiculous and entitled? Wait, run that back. Like, you think that this is Howard's fault, or the, the students. You think the students I don't are think it's extra. their fault, but I don't think the whole dog walking, like, them walking through the campus with the dog is that, that big of a deal. Like I said, like, other things, like, oh, homecoming, y'all need to be quiet and all that. Yeah, I get that, but the dogs, 
it, I just don't think that's affecting your day. Well, I have another perspective. Go ahead. Y'all know me. So here's my thing. <laughs> <laughs> here's my thing. Please. I've been to Howard's campus. Now, that was a long time ago. But I'm inclined to believe it hadn't changed that much. It might behoove y'all to let these nice Caucasian folks walk their dogs through your campus because they might have fat checkbooks. And while they walk through your campus, they might be inspired to want to make a donation. So let them walk through your campus. They might say, you know what? This is a, I would love to put our name on this building. We got a thousand, uh, two million dollar check. We, we got some money we want to disperse. And you guys like you can use another building just from walking their dog through your campus. You never know. Like, I, it's just ludicrous. But it's what not if that, they don't? I just don't really. Okay, well. Worst case scenario, it I don't makes see campus what the issue. Nicer. Like their campus is literally in the middle of like it's just in the middle. Like you can walk through it to get to this other side. It's just like, I don't think that's an issue. The whole dog thing. Like I said, there are bigger issues that they have. Like when they say things like I've heard somebody say, "Well, they should just move the campus." Now that I understand, but <laughs> the whole walking the dog, I, I just didn't see the issue behind. My that. first thought was droppings. That's my first thought with white people. Uh, excuse me. I have to take this back. Because I think this applies to everybody. I think a lot of people are very lax with their dogs. And they don't mm. pick up after their dogs. I mm. always practice incredible owner hygiene with my, my pet. And I believe in that. I believe I that have we have a right. Pet. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my Instagram. I've, never, I've been he at your house. He has his own Instagram. Well, if we don't even go behind that, HBCUs, they religiously are, they are very big on the whole upkeeping of the yard and stuff like that. So it's going to get picked up anyways, I guess. So it's really Oh, so we now have to pick up the community. Shh. Sh- it's already poop out there that they're going to be picking that, up anyways. But my, that's my question, though. Isn't this a futile conversation because it's dog poop and it's made to yeah. be biodegradable? And so it's even good if you don't pick it up, it's going to... For your, for your heels? Is it good for your pump? Is it good for your door? Well, nobody is it good for you your... to wear your heels. Facts. I'm so confused. I paid 30000 in tuition and I can't wear heels. Well, I don't think... It, actually, I'm very confused. Well, that's your fault. Well, if we're going to be technical, Caucasians are very good about picking up after their dogs. It's I see it all the time. Actually. You can't prove that. It's you can't prove yeah, that. You. You that's can't just prove that. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. Before I've anybody has to pick them. up anything, if students are not using this space, why are we making accommodations for residents that are not even, you don't have to use this property. You're not paying to use this property. Student tuition dollars are paying for this property, so it's their space. Why should they have to have dogs in their space? Wait, is, when, is, how, is how a private or public? It's, it's, it's a private, private in the sense that it's a university. Like, so if you're not faculty, why are you on the, on the yard anyway? Because you're trying to get to the other side, and that's quicker. I thought about a joke. Well, you want Fido. <laughs> <laughs> you want Fido need to walk around. You can't just walk through somebody's living room because they're right in front of the, the dang yogurt shop. And you your like to get a room outside. Quick... <laughs> you can't walk through somebody's yard. If it was your yard, I could not just trip through your yard to get I to the yogurt know. shop. I just, I just don't see the <laughs> you can shoot Like me. I said, Tuskegee has wild animals all on campus. They're like our family pets. So that's, I don't know. But the question becomes, reciprocally, do we have that gripe with PWIs? PWIs are open to whoever. They want to walk around with their dogs, they walk through them. So they what's sure the difference? And what if people are afraid of dogs? Some people are allergic to dogs. I'm actually afraid of dogs, but most of them don't have like rock walls. That's when I So really what if somebody it. lets one loose and they're just like, oh, he doesn't have dogs loose. People, people, a lot, of, a lot of people do not, no, not a rock wall, but a lot of people don't walk their dogs on a leash. So what if you just got your dog and he just roams up to you when he's six feet, walking feet their dog on a leash. tall? Yeah, I don't see a lot of them. I don't see a lot of this. I do. I do mm-hmm. definitely, kind of and they they consider that their dogs are trained, and most of the dogs are trained. But we are some not of the size dog, of horses. It's the dog part people tend to do that, and we're not talking about little teacup. That's how they're trained. It's just that their dogs oh, running around. I don't. Know. We're not talking about teacup poodles. I mean, it's a teacup <laughs> poodle running around. And they I'm okay said their dogs <laughs> running around. But the now we talking about some pit bulls and, and some Yorkie. I mean, um, <laughs> terriers walking around on campus, dropping crap all over the campus. Who did the ball game? But we cannot ask them to do things that they don't ask us to do. When they have PWI campuses, if they're open to the public they can walk through them knock yourself out even if it's a private institution most of them don't have a problem with that the public or the public's pooches i think they're hand in hand you're not gonna see a naked dog around somewhere else facts that's what i feel like the energy needs to go somewhere else like Like energizing their alumni base to get more money Corey townsend on the route says that this is an ongoing trend in the dc area he says it is white privilege showing its pale white face to the masses there are a bevy of parks around dc for people to take their mild uh uh, manner frivolity with their dogs and Howard University is not one of those places. People are afraid of dogs. And the only people on the yard should be, the only the dogs on the yard should be cute dogs. That's <laughs> what they have We're said. really doing that. Yeah, somebody I, said. We're, we're really I doing that. I understand the argument. Now, I, I only like some dogs. I'm, I hate, in fact, people call me a dog, but I hate most dogs. There's only a couple breeds of dogs I think are even worth it. I love dogs. But, mm-hmm. so I would be very dis- disturbed by something like that. I mean, like I said, if it's not a pit bull or a rock roll, I'm okay, because those dogs I don't I like terriers. I, love, I don't I, like I yappy yaps. Yaps. I don't like chihuahua. I don't chihuahua, like any I don't like those. little, I don't like, those are cats. Well, I love cats. 
to me. I love a good teacup poodle. I used so to I have one. <laughs> I love you used to have a, a teacup poodle. Where, where you get that kind of money from? I, I just think as, as dog owners, <laughs> and I'm saying this because there's a lot of women in my family, a lot of black women in my family who do not like dogs, and I learned growing up that everybody don't think your dog is cute. You think your dog is cute. A lot of people don't think your dog is cute. Just like if you had a kid and it just walked up to A lot of people don't don't like what you like. So I, you, I think you got to be careful of other people's space. You can't just Again, fling your stuff everywhere. I like the energy needs to go somewhere else. <laughs> I agree. I just feel like this is, we have so many other issues, especially HBCUs. They have so many other issues we're worried about. Not, not Howard. Howard. This Howard? is the HBCU. Maybe Howard? this is their biggest issue. They issues. have mm-hmm. problems at Howard. I would, I I would never get when, when P. Diddy and them had to go down there and try to bail them out of that issue they had financially, and they became this whole debacle a couple years ago. So Howard is not squeaky clean. They used to be, Listen, but they are no longer the elite of the elite. They said their neighbors are treating their campus like a dog park, which I know involves mess. Like, I know it involves waste, because that's usually the biggest thing, is people don't pick up behind their dogs. shoot the dogs, honey. Just shoot, shoot the dogs. The, what? That's what we not going to That can be staying your ground. <laughs> Just shoot. Does that apply to animals? I'm no. sure it does. No, I'm sure it does. I don't look, know. I if the dog so. is crapping in your yard, it's well, it fine. Yeah, well, I does. mean, Howard Yard, they probably all got they all strapped anyway. If the dog starts taking the crap in your yard on Howard campus, find out where to stand your well, ground. Let me know how Actually, that's, go that's what they should do. Individual. Let I me know how that's going to go. Actually, no, they should do that because then the argument, the legitimate argument is, is to stand my ground. The dog was in, was invading my territory, so I shot him. Now listen. Oh my God! No! Now listen. <laughs> you with cats? I may be on 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 board with that for sure. For sure. I'm just saying. You know, we always the running joke is if you want to get the world involved. Bring some animals in. So somebody shoot. I'm not. I'm not gonna say that because I'm. Gonna I say can't it. believe you're advocating if, this on Earth Day. If Earth Day. Yes, today's Earth Day. Well, their crap is not biodegradable. So if you're not gonna pick it up with a baggie, don't bring them across campus. <laughs> if somebody were to shoot one of these animals that were invading the property, or kick it, and or kick it, and they stand behind the stand your ground law. I would love to see how that falls because clearly the cases we make saying that African American males being gunned down off that same law, if they can use that for the dogs, I want to see how the outcome. I want to see what the outcry is then. Poor they Lassie. will test to see if that theory is true. Poor Lassie. Look, uh, Lassie. poor Lassie. <laughs> and again, I don't blame these animals at all, especially on Earth Day. I blame the owners. We are your dog owner. You need to be responsible. I don't blame your dog for taking us. I blame you. Um, <laughs> All right, so we're going to wrap up today's show. It has been a fun Monday. It's Easter Monday. Um, all Jews I know are still celebrating. So much respect to Jews. Uh, what do you have planned for the rest of the day? Because you have... Oh, at, um, so at 3.30, the TV, the Leadership Blend TV show airs on the Now Network. Uh, if you're not in the major markets to see it on cable, then you want to stream it at thenownetwork.org. Uh, and I will actually be on the red carpet this Friday, which I, this Saturday, which I'll talk about later, uh, mm-hmm. the Steeple Awards. Ooh. I'll be covering the red carpet for IBNX. So we'll talk more about that on Friday. So, yeah, check out the website also at ricecommunity.com to see what's going on. That's W-R-I-C-E. And, yeah, I'll see you in an hour and a half on the Now Network. <laughs>